I know I am like so fucking beyond late for this, you guys. Hopefully you still give a fuck. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle and welcome to the December 2021 Tarot and Astrology readings where I blend tarot and astrology to tell you what could be coming for your month ahead based on your sign rising sign will resonate most though but your moon and sun sign you may find messages in there for you too so you can watch them as well these have been a lot of work i've been working for days straight to get these done before we get started before you go clicking to your sign i do have some important things to say really really quickly first off this month in december i am going to be doing a variety of different 2022 year ahead stuff and even personal readings over on my patreon if you have been wanting to get some kind of glimpse into what 2022 has in store for you that maybe you can't afford a personal reading right now then this could definitely be an affordable option for you patreon is basically a monthly subscription service that you can cancel at any time i offer tons of different content exclusive post videos readings over on patreon but this month in particular i am offering 2022 content to the top three memberships the 15 dollars 25 dollars and 40 dollars memberships so this is a short summary of the events and readings that I will be offering this month for these different tiers. The $15 tier will receive the general 2022 webinar where we talk about the major transits in 2022. The $25 tier will receive the 2022 personal annual perfection reading. So basically it's a reading where we talk about your annual perfection for the year ahead. And then the $40 membership will receive the 2022 personal major transit reading where we go over one major transit coming for your personal chart in 2022. So the $25 and $40 membership Memberships are the ones that actually receive personal readings based on your own chart. So keep that in mind and you will also need to be present at the live events when I do those personal readings. Also, whichever one you sign up for, you will receive the other stuff from the lower memberships as well. So if you sign up for the $40 one, you basically receive all of these things. And then if you sign up for the $25 one, you will receive the annual perfection reading for the year ahead, but also the 2022 webinar and all the other lower membership content that I do and have on Patreon. See my Patreon is is linked down below if that's something that you are interested in or that you think that you would be interested in. And on top of that, I now am offering my astrology course that I did earlier this year. It was a live course when I did it, but I recorded all of the classes. If you would like access to that course and to all those classes to learn astrology in a very easy and basic way, like I make sure that it is very relatable. I would say that I do somewhat have a talent for bringing things down and helping Helping people understand them in a more like simplistic and basic way so it's not so complex and confusing or you learn a shit ton about yourself and your own chart through the course like you will learn so so much <laughs> you will learn how to read your own chart which is the best gift that you can have biggest feedback that I got on the course from the people that took it originally was that they didn't expect that they would learn so so much about themselves their lives the world and the people around them and it was actually very like healing for them simultaneously anyways so if that's something that you're interested in you can find that on my website and if you would be interested in setting up a payment plan for the astrology divination course you can also email me about that and we can figure something out but anyways with that all being said uh, your rising sign will resonate most but your moon and sun sign you may find messages in there for you too so you can watch them as well if you haven't seen my other videos talking about December definitely go watch them December is a really really big month uh, it's really really important and so yeah with all that out of the way let's go ahead and get into the sign readings the timestamps will be linked down below all right starting with you my lovely Sagittarians happy birthday if your birthday is around this time period this will resonate though the most for sag rising so please do keep that in mind uh, but you may find some messages in here if you're a sag sun or moon as well so sag 2021 has been a big year for you as the south node has been traveling through your sign really working on a lot of healing in regards to your identity and letting go of old attachments in regards to who you are the kind of person that you are your view of yourself your view of your life your perspective and i feel like a lot of you guys especially sag risings have really been getting into a lot of like mystical spiritual healing modalities like really exploring like self-exploration is really like the theme that i 
feel like this year has been about for you, but it's also been very much about exploring your relationships and exploring your relationship dynamics, what other people think, what other people want you to do versus yourself and your own identity and where you stand. And so this has been a year where those themes could have been really coming up for you. And another big thing that you've been re really dealing with this year, Sagittarius, are freedom when it comes to health, freedom when it comes to work, freedom when it comes to your day-to-day -day mundane life, like you've been wanting to shake things up, try new things, get into new routines. There may have been a lot of confusion or chaos in regards to your day-to-day -day or disruptions and your day-to-day -day routines, work, health, you know, your day-to-day -day life in some way, but you've had to really kind of work on this push and pull between what you're responsible for, what you're accountable for, what are your responsibilities, duties, and tasks that need to be complete and dealing with certain disruptions or distractions in those areas versus what you can do, like what you actually physically can do, uh, what you're good at, what you're skilled at. And so there may have been a lot of like responsibility on you or a lot like your your load of your day to day life, your errands, your routines may have been heavy on and off this year. And you've had to really work on how to break free or find freedom in those things and how to uh, kind of find more independence in those areas. And so I really feel like that's what has been coming up for you in 2021. And December is really a wrap up of a lot of that. We have this solar eclipse in your sign pointing to major, major changes in who you are as a person, how you view yourself. This is marking a massive new time period over the next six months. It can ripple for you as a person to be stepping into this new you, this new version of who you are and really seeing yourself through a different lens, but also seeing how that really affects you and your reality in the rest of your life, like possibly changing your lifestyle or changing how it is that you view yourself and the world. And so I think that December is a month, Sagittarius, where you are really seeing really big changes and you've done a lot of work, a lot of healing. You've likely been going through a lot of endings recently, a lot of purging, detoxing, kind of like getting things out of your system or clearing things from your subconscious with Mars in your 12th house. But Mars is stepping into your first house this month on the 13th. And so the passion and the, there's gonna, you're gonna be like, there's going to be a lot of initiation like you're going to feel reignited you're going to feel like like you've just been set on fire in a good way like you're gonna want to move forward with things and you've just done so much deep exploration like self-exploration i see here into healing and into like your your spiritual awareness like discovering discovering and become aware of things that you were not before. And it's been a time where you've been able to rest and kind of like get your energy back. And I feel like this month, especially mid month is when your energy hits you with this Ace of Wands. You're gonna be feeling like, oh, okay, I get it. I wanna move forward now. I'm ready to move forward now. Like this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. Your direction becomes very clear and your motivations and intentions become very clear. You become very passionate, like spiritually speaking, you're going to be feeling on fire. Like I'm ready to do this. I know who I am now. Like I'm leaving whatever does not serve me in the past because it's, it's not in alignment with who I am now. It's not me anymore. And so that is what you're really going to be seeing uh, this month, Sagittarius. So be on the lookout for that. We have the uh, Page of Wands and the Four of Swords, which really goes with that deep self-exploration theme that I was saying. It's like you've really stepped into your... I really see you this month, Sag, stepping into a role of empowerment, like feeling very empowered, feeling very like in your element, like like joyful, doing things that you're passionate about, doing things that bring you joy, doing things that that feel like just like like they're in alignment with who you are. Like you're seeing the bigger picture now. You're seeing things from a broader perspective and you're seeing your potential. That is what I was fucking looking for. You're seeing your potential. That goes perfectly with this. It's like your potential is realized this month and 
you are just being so encouraged, but I think like by yourself because I drew my own little cards here and the card I drew is cheer yourself on, you're your own biggest fan. And then we have encouragement. So there's just tons of encouragement this month, like from the universe, maybe people around you, you to like go and do you, go and be you, go and like do whatever it is that you feel in your soul that needs to be done. Like whatever you feel your path is, that is where you're going to be like really focused on this month. And yeah, I feel like it's your birthday month and this is just like really exciting. But I will see here because we have the pattern. Are you seeing the pattern yet? And so I think this month, once again, you're becoming aware of a lot of your old toxic behaviors, patterns that you used to associate with your personality. Like you used to think like, oh, that's just me. That's just the way I am. Like, whatever and you've really seen like this year but i think especially over these last couple of months how those patterns can be really like self-destructive and really self-sabotaging and so you're kind of like you're becoming aware of them and you're able to finally let go because we have bittersweet here and what i'm getting from this card it's like you've come to a point now where you not only see your patterns and you see how destructive and toxic like these old versions of you have been and these old toxic like behaviors and traits about yourself that you have been able to let go of or that you've been working on healing but at the same time you're starting to like actually be okay with them not in like an unhealthy way but like in a way where it's like i see why i had to do that and i see why like it's almost like you're you're saying goodbye to old versions of you, which can feel bittersweet. It can feel like this was me at one point. And yeah, like it was not serving me anymore. It does not serve me today with who I am now. But like that was me for so long, you know what I mean? And so it can feel like you're kind of breaking up with this old version of you or this old way of doing something or this old way, this old life that you used to have. And that can feel kind of like there can be certain things that you do miss or certain things that that you do like that you did find comfort in at one time. But now you're like, I don't need this anymore. Like I'm moving on. I like see what I see the bigger picture. I see my potential. I see what I can accomplish. I see what I can do. And that is what you're moving towards this month in December, Sag. That's what I see for you personally. This may not resonate with everybody, so do keep that in mind. Do let me know if it resonates down below. Some other things I see coming up for you, Sag, is possibly a major peak moment realization or unfortunately even an ending to do with a significant relationship or certain relationships in your life or at least certain relationship dynamics in your life. Around this Gemini full moon on the 18th, that could happen. There's going to be a massive focus towards relationships towards like the end of the month and it could involve finances as well or self-worth possessions, what you have, the things that allow you to live the lifestyle that you want to live. And so basically what I see here is like your priorities are changing massively with Venus conjunct Pluto in your second house in regards to your relationships and the way that you're thinking about relationships, the way like your framework and groundwork for certain relationships in your life is changing on like a massive, massive scale with this Venus Pluto conjunction in your second house finances, priorities, money, possessions, you know, things that you own are all changing this month for you, Sag. And so you want to kind of be on the lookout for those things. You could start already noticing them by now, by the time you're watching this, but Venus is going to go retrograde on the 19th on Pluto. And the last time this happened was 2013 to 2014. And so if you think back like to the end of 2013, to like the first few months of 2014, what was going on in your life around that time. Venus retrograded on Pluto then in Capricorn, and it was like a very destructive time, but it's gonna be different for everybody. It may not be as destructive for some of you. Uh, some of you just may experience like really intense or deep financial changes, changes in self-worth, what you value, what you love, what you're interested in, and in relationships in some regard, because Mercury is gonna be in Capricorn as well, and Mercury rules your seventh house of relationships. 
And so this is a time where I think you're going to be more focused on what you bring to the table yourself and what you have to offer rather than the other person or other people in your life. It doesn't have to be romantic for some. It could just be like a friendship. Basically, that is what I see for you this month, Sag. Uh, definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating. I also, with uh, at the very end of this month, Jupiter is moving into Pisces, which is your fourth house. So there's going to be a lot of expansion, growth, and seeing the potential when it comes to home, family, or roots in your foundation. Like you're going to be really wanting to connect more with your family, your roots, those that are important to you, your private life, like that is going to expand coming up into 2022. So be on the lookout for those things as well. But let me know down below if this resonated, Sag. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Happy birthday again. Have a very exciting and liberating month, and I will see you guys in my other videos. Hi Capricorn, welcome to your December 2021 tarot and astrology reading. Let's go ahead and hop into it. I got your cards here, I got your astrology pulled up. December is a really big fucking month for you Capricorn, especially. I mean like you are the star of the show in December in a lot of ways, like you and Sag, but especially you because of this Venus-Pluto conjunction in your sign. And I know you have been through it the last several years, but we are at a massive grand finale for the shit that you've been through. And really, this is just purging any last remnants of things that are no longer aligned with who you are as a person. Like, you've changed so much in regards to your identity and who you are and, you know, your your life in general and how you go about living your life. Like, you are just a completely different person, right, over these last several years. And with Venus on Pluto in your sign, this is a chance, although, yes, and we'll talk about it. There are some things that can come up from this that can be uncomfortable and dark. Basically, I feel that this conjunction is really bringing out your power. It is really showing you what you're made of. It is really showing you just how deep and profound uh, of a person that you are. You know, the ascendant, so especially if you're a Capricorn rising, the ascendant is where the soul comes into the body. And so this is a very important part of your chart where you are going through a massive reconstruction period of who you are and how you view yourself again. But you've already done so much that I feel that this is more so about endings and truly reaching down and finding that power within you again um, and i see that in your cards here as well like we have the storm is almost over these are just like little cards that i made a while ago but we have the storm is almost over and so that tells me that like even though this venus pluto conjunction and this venus retrograde on pluto can seem very deep and profound um, i think that at the same time it is going to realign you with similar lessons that you've learned before, but maybe you forgot. It's like you've forgotten who you are, and this month reminds you. These next few months remind you, honestly, of who you are again, because we also have what mask are you wearing? And so this is really stripping off any false identities or false ideas of yourself that you've been kind of operating under, uh, that you've been kind of holding on to from the past, because we also have talisman here which really tells me that like you've changed so much more than you think you do and sometimes it even though we've changed and we can go through a really profound change and we can see how much we've changed sometimes we can forget and sometimes we can still fall back into old patterns behaviors ways of doing things or ways of looking at things very easily because we were in those ways of doing things for so long and that's kind of what i'm getting here for you capricorn it's like this is like a talisman for you. It's like a reminder of like what you've been through and just how powerful you are. And it may come in at first and like slap you in the face and you may be like, holy shit, this is not good at first, right? And this may not be for all of you. This is a general reading. Remember, I'm just intuitively interpreting things here. Uh, but 
I don't think that it's going to be anywhere as near as crazy as where you've been, right? Like you fucking got this. So I don't want you to fear. This is not me fear mongering you. This is telling you that you are a fucking badass and that you can do this, right? Um, it, you've been through way fucking worse. Like when we had the fucking shit show of planets and your sign, Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, all of that in your sign, like last year and the year before, like that that was like the worst of it for you. And so this is, you know, it's Venus. And so really it's realigning you, you with what you love, what you value, what's important to you, self-love, right? Like self-respect. And so this is a time where if you've been operating under some kind of false identity, you know what I mean? And I don't mean like, you know, quite literally, I mean more so like internally, like if you've been acting like someone that you're not, or if you haven't been staying quite true to who you are, if you've been falling back into old behaviors or toxic patterns, toxic ways of doing things, being very manipulative, um, then this month is going to rip that mask off of you by the end of the month and into next month. And it's going to pull out the authenticity that you know is inside of you, you know? And so that is really what I see here uh, for this Venus retrograde for you, Capricorn. It's going to show you possible toxic behaviors with the Three of Swords and the Devil card here that you've adapted, whether in the past or currently, and how they may be affecting you currently, you like manipulation, betrayal, shadiness, sketchiness. Um, this could be for some of you with certain people in your life as well, or, you know, ways that you're going about things that may not be the best, like something that you're hiding, uh, may come out around this time and you may have to face these habits and patterns that you've been keeping in because really they're just hurting you, right? They are hurting you. They're not adding any value to your life. They are not adding any, anything, right? Like, and so this is a time where you may feel a little bit out of control or where you may feel a little bit chaotic. It's going to like bring these things up for you to finally heal them with heal the ouch here. Like it, it, it's bringing these really deep things within you, these deep emotions, feelings, psychological things. We have emotional suppression here. So anything that you've been hiding or keeping down about yourself or anything that you've been doing that's not true to who you are is under construction right now. Like your identity, who you are is under a major reconstruction period. But I think that this is so, I just feel it. Like it may feel like serious or scary at first. Like Pluto is scary. <laughs> like it literally is like it's Hades, right? And, and Venus is Persephone basically. Like that mythology really works here with these two planets with this conjunction and this retrograde because it's like, you know, Venus is going to the underworld. Pluto is the underworld and it's been in your sign since like 2008. And so you've been going under massive transformations with who you are, but you've been also able to reach down and find this really deep and profound power within you that maybe you didn't know you had before. And so this Venus retrograde is highlighting that. It's like, hey, look, if you don't like this, why are you doing this? Like, hey, if this relationship's not working for you, then why are you in it? Hey, if this is not what you're interested in, or if this was is not what you like wearing, then why are you doing it, right? Like it could be as simple as like your wardrobe goes under a massive change. Like the way that you present yourself to the world, how you go about things is going under a massive change. It's like, it's getting like a surgery, right? Like you are going through some kind of massive kind of like rebirth period, right? But first must come the death, right? And so first there is some kind of ending and it more so has to do with you. It more so has to do with your identity. And you know, there could be worse places for this, right? Like, so I don't want you to freak out. This isn't like the worst fucking place that you could have this, but still, I think that this is gonna be very powerful for you. So some other stuff that is happening this month, I mean, that's like the main thing, right? Like that's like the biggest thing, especially for you. We've had this solar eclipse in Sagittarius, which is in your 12th house, which really is bringing up like subconscious habits, patterns, behavior, behaviors, things like this. And, you know, this 12th house, like South Node has really forced you over the year of 2021 to go inward, to 
possibly isolate yourself a little bit more to really get a little bit more spiritual to heal basically to get into things that are possibly like spiritual remedies spiritual belief systems expanding your belief systems but also at the same time pulling you back making you a little bit more secluded there's been kind of that energy throughout 2021 for you capricorn and then there's also been this crazy energy of your ruling planet saturn in your second squaring uranus in your fifth and so interests are things that you've wanted to do you've wanted like freedom of self-expression but maybe it's been held back by your money your possessions your income or how you feel you're supposed to act or certain values that you have or what you feel you should do what you feel is the right thing um, there's also been a lot of disruptions when it comes to your passions love sexuality children all of these different types of things um, with Uranus in your fifth house but it's been really shaking things up there for you to figure out what kind of passions fuel, fuel your heart what gives you freedom what gives you a sense of purpose meaning that you can offer to the world while simultaneously you feeling restricted in regards to your finances maybe there's something that you want to do like you want to do a hobby or something that you love start your own business whatever but saturn has been in your second house like no that won't create financial stability we have to play smart about this you know what i mean and so you've been kind of in this back and forth and that's just an example and we even have impasse here and so in december i see for you capricorn that you could be coming through or to a impasse you could be coming to a crossroads there could be something that you are trying to decide on like which way should i go how should i go about this but your perception on something is changing drastically this month because we have the perception card but we also have neptune in your third house which will be making a series of squares to the planets in your 12th house mercury and the sun and so this is and this is going to happen like pretty early on like the second third week of the month um, and so this is going to be a time where you're really kind of possibly confused about what you believe or what to believe and you want to be very careful around this time because i also see here that this could be some kind of manipulating behavior you hiding something or someone else hiding something or someone else in your life that may not have true intentions or may not be genuine um, i really feel like there is something not what it appears to be mid month that somehow may echo throughout the rest of the month i'm not sure but I, I really do feel that for you, Capricorn, especially. So you want to watch out for that. Take things kind of slow this month. Don't rush into anything. This is not a month to rush into anything. With Mars moving into your 12th house, once again, you could start feeling a little bit isolated in your beliefs, your ideologies, your views on things. And it could be a time where you're kind of keeping your views on things to yourself. Um and where you are kind of resting or working on healing um, or doing some kind of deep dive into things that you're you know doing behind the scenes in some way and then we also have ride the wave which also kind of tells me like just go with the flow this month it's not a month to try to like control things you're going to want to with venus on pluto but it's not going to be perfect you're not gonna you know it's going there's going to be a certain level of surrender that's going to have to happen here so what's interesting is we also have the soulmate card. Ooh, hoo, 11, 11, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so there could be something coming up with like relationships or maybe some of you guys are like questioning something about soulmates this month or there's some kind of confusion. I really, when I saw this card though and knowing your astrology, I really feel like this is a month where you realize like you're your soulmate, right? Like not to say that there's not someone out there for you. That's not what I'm saying, but this is like, you're starting to realize just how valuable you are and how much you've put that under the rug or tried to sweep that away or acted like you weren't even though you are and so this could be a month where because impasse came right after where you're kind of at this crossroads with a relationship or someone really significant in your life also where you're realizing things about yourself and how important you are so back to the three of swords and the devil here i feel like this is addressing possible betrayal or emotional issues like toxic issues possibly from the past that could somehow be affecting the present and what's beautiful about this though is we end with the full so this is like a new beginning a refresh a reset it's like you're able to let go of past baggage 
And maybe like old versions of you rise up to the surface and you're like, oh, I could do what I used to do or I could react to this situation how I used to react. But then you're like, oh no, that's not me anymore. And it allows you to move forward in a new way. So that is what I'm seeing here for you this month, Capricorn. Also, Jupiter moves into Pisces, your third house. Uh, of your perception, your perspective, and uh, speaking, communicating, your environment, your local environment. It's definitely going to be a time where you're wanting to expand your skill set, your knowledge, your learning, and where you're wanting to maybe even be more involved in your community or in a community in some way, um, in your city in some way. So definitely watch out for those themes that start towards the end of this month. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you so, so much for watching Capricorn. Comment down below and let me know if any of this resonated you know i love to hear your feedback and i will see you guys in my other videos bye what's up aquarius welcome back to the channel and welcome to your december 2021 reading so aquarius december is a month <laughs> your year in general aquarius has been very interesting as you've been dealing with really figuring out what it is that you love what it is that you're passionate about what it is that interests you and you know it's been a time where you've been possibly feeling a little bit more reserved and a little bit like more to yourself you know and you've had a lot going on in terms of the home and family and like a lot of chaos there or a lot of shakeups there to do with your home family and roots and your living situations or the people that you live with and with your ruling planet saturn in your sign it could just feel like this is a year where you felt very more to yourself or very isolated or just misunderstood where you've had to like really grow up in a lot of ways i think that this is a month that is digging into that a little bit more with the perspective part with the you part because of the venus pluto conjunction and capricorn in your 12th house which is ruled by saturn as well saturn is in your sign and so this could be a time where you are really like having to go inward and really address certain self-sabotaging behaviors, certain conditioning, certain like old foundations that have just been corrupted, that just are no longer working and leading you into vicious circles that you don't want to be in and old behaviors as well. Things from the past situations, from the past relationships, from the past could all really come up this month for you. This is a time where you are going to be feeling very, very pulled inward and where you are reflecting a lot on things that have ended or old endings. So this could be somewhat of an intense month for you, especially later on in the month. I'm not going to lie. You may be feeling a little bit more private this month. You may be feeling a little bit more to yourself, going a little bit more inward with that Venus retrograde in your 12th house. It's really asking you to reflect on things from the past that are just possibly not over because we have protecting treasure here. And so for me, it's kind of like you could be protecting things that you think you still need to protect, but you haven't actually like went through them, right? Like maybe, you know, a long time ago, you put shit in a box and you've been carrying that box around with you, but you've never bothered to like go through the box and actually see like, do I actually want to keep this stuff now? Like, is it useful to me now? Is, is what's in here even usable anymore? You know what I mean? And so you finally go through that box and you're like, wait, like this isn't even what I thought it was, you know, like this is not even what I thought I had in here. Um, it's like not even useful or it's damaged or like I should just throw it away, whatever. And so you finally are like going through these old boxes, like metaphorically speaking, where you're seeing that what's in there either is still valuable or isn't still valuable. And so you're like really digging deep uh, these next couple months, really. And it's going to put you in some unknown situations. It's going to put you in situations where you may feel a little bit blinded at first, or you may be a little bit blindsided by it. It's digging into your subconscious, your subconscious reactions, behaviors, kind of asking you to face certain things that you've been possibly avoiding or putting off or not not been wanting to face in some way. This is a month where that is really coming up. Like, old conditioning, old patterns, self-sabotaging self behaviors, escapism tendencies, 
really digging into what you feel, you know, what you used to feel is valuable or what you used to feel was important and seeing what's in there if you still feel that way. And I see that here with your tarot cards too. We have the moon and the page of pentacles here for you. And so it's like your perception is changing on yourself and your own value, but also things that you've put value into, whether that be relationship things, possessions, etc. It's like your perception, once again, what you view as important um, may not be true to who you are now or true anymore. And so you're really reflecting on these things. And then we also have the faith card here. And so this is telling me, you know, like with into the unknown, you're really being asked right now, Aquarius, to have faith even though you can't see. And I know that's really hard to do, but the faith card wouldn't be coming up if 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 you shouldn't have faith in whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like the message is to have faith because for whatever reason, you are drilling this hole into the depths of things that you've been putting off, your subconscious, et cetera, to get to the bottom of something so it can be purged. Uh, this could also be a time where in some way, somehow you are removed from your normal everyday life, like where you are kind of secluded in some way, whether you seclude yourself or some kind of situation happens that kind of pushes you inward to be a little bit more secluded. This has also been a year, Aquarius, where you've really had to like work on your boundaries and work on, you know, what is actually important to you and where you've had to like really boss up and really take care of things in your life. We also have Jupiter moving into Pisces at the very end of the month. Uh, and this will be in your second house of money and resources. And so what I see here is there's going to be like a lot of optimism and faith coming in when it comes to your money and resources and when it comes to what's important to you, what you want to, what you need to be successful or live the life that you want to live. And you're going to feel like you're going to want to expand your resources. You're going to want to expand what it is that you own. You're going to want to expand your income, the different ways that you make income. But first you have to deal with these like shady things that are subconsciously like you know, behind you that you can't always see that hold you back or that are like self-defeating in some way to get there. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and when Jupiter moves into Pisces, it'll be there throughout 2022 um, for the most part. I mean, it'll be into Aries for a few months, then retrograde back. But so Jupiter and Pisces in 2022 is definitely, you know, speaking also to your income, your resources, et cetera, you know, really expanding in the areas of what you have, what you own, and how that will, you know, help you in your life. So anyways, Aquarius, that is what I'm seeing for you for the month of December and your little 2021 recap. Definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating. I'd love to hear about it. And yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. What's up, Pisces? Welcome to your December 2021 horoscope. I hope you guys are doing well. December is a really big month, Pisces. And really what I see here for you is there's a large focus on your social life and certain social situations, friend groups, connections, alliances, or like-minded people in your life that are coming up for a lot of Pisces risings, especially. And there's also a massive theme of determination, career, direction, and where you wanna go in life. And I'm seeing that here in your cards too. So let's start with the social life, friend, social group thing, because that's really uh, one of the big things that I'm seeing come up for your, that I could talk, come up for you here. So the reason that I'm seeing this is because Venus and Pluto are coming together for most of the month in your 11th house and then Venus is going to retrograde on Pluto and this is ruled you know your 11th house of Capricorn is ruled by Saturn which is in your 12th house and so this could be self-sabotaging behaviors regarding friends or also endings regarding friends or even also like 
hidden things going on with friends or social situations, friend groups, etc. This is something that you definitely could be seeing come up this month um, and that you want to kind of be careful for because Venus and Pluto can bring up a lot of shady things. It can dig up a lot of things that were hidden, betrayals, things like that, and it can be a very deep time. And it can also be showing you your power regarding social situations, your place in the world, and what it is that you know you need to embrace in order to come into your power with what it is that you want to do your ambitions you know your goals etc so that's another way that this energy can be playing out and i'm really seeing this in your cards here with the knight of wands this could really be bringing up boundaries this could really be bringing up you know issues when it comes to determination and what you know what things are holding you back and so there could be kind of like lessons regarding being somewhat naive when it comes to certain friends, people in your life or certain situations in your life and wanting connection or feeling somewhat lonely versus having boundaries. Now, for some of you, this could be the total opposite where you just have walls up and you're isolating yourself because you're scared of getting hurt. And for you, it could play out in a totally different way if that's you, where you are kind of rethinking the connections in your life and rethinking, you know, what is important to you regarding the connections in your life and how to get out there more, how to put yourself out there more. But this is definitely going to be a time where um, you are dealing with some kind of issues or challenges regarding other people connections you know for some of you guys this could have something to do with being online or online groups online forums things like that and so those are definitely going to be big for you and then we also have a lot of action going on in your 10th house of career reputation putting yourself out there into the world and so this could be a time where you're really kind of changing something in regards to like if you're doing something maybe you're changing your your who you're trying to reach like kind of audience that you're trying to reach or the kind of people that you are selling to you know or the kind of clients that you want to have like you're really kind of rethinking what you're doing here with your life and in your life something really good about this month though is that jupiter is coming into your sign uh at the very end of the month and so i think you know this is going to be really great because if you're a pisces rising jupiter is your chart ruler uh jupiter rules over your rising sign so with jupiter coming in to your sign. Um, I think that this is going to be really great. It's going to involve a lot of growth and expansion of who you are as a person. And you're going to be feeling a lot more optimistic, a lot more, you're going to be like having a lot more faith in things. Something else that is kind of somewhat challenging as well, though, this month is that Saturn and Uranus are getting into their last square of this year again between your 12th and third house and so once again this could have something to do with you kind of trying to hold something in or hold something back versus you expressing something and putting something out there is really how i see that playing out and how i've you know kind of interpreted it before for you guys so and we've been having this kind of all year you know like 2021 for you pisces has been very much about learning kind of like this balance between your private life your home life and your family versus your career your reputation your public life and your your goals and where you want to go and you know the things that you want to do and so you've really had to find this balance but there's also been this push and pull between like seclusion and isolation and kind of like going within or uh being somewhat secluded versus certain independence or needs for independence when it comes to your local environment or doing things that you're interested in or expressing yourself or speaking your truth in a certain way or learning something new. And so there's been some kind of tension building there that maybe you've been, you know, going through or dealing with on and off throughout 2021. So your other cards that we have here are service. And so this could definitely be a month where you are possibly trying to be of service to someone or maybe even for some of you feeling somewhat responsible for somebody else in some way and that you are like reevaluating like your what you're doing with your life is like really under reconstruction right now and so this is a time where 
it could kind of feel like, you know, you're on this quest for something or you're trying to be on this quest for something. Um, and for some of you, you could be really thinking about doing something in service to other people, like trying to help other people in some way. So that could be something that's coming up too. Now, your other cards here, we have goblins and we have coming apart. And so I really feel like with coming apart, for some of you, this could be that you're facing certain fears that you have regarding your future, what you want in life, what you're doing, friends, social life, etc. And for some of you, this could be that you're quite literally coming apart from certain people, certain groups of people, certain friendships, etc. And I also, with goblins here, I also feel like you're facing, you know, goblins is about like certain thoughts and ways of thinking that are kind of like little goblins in your mind they're like oh you can't do this or that would never work or you're a failure or, you're not good enough whatever the case may be and so this is a month where some of those thoughts might come up but they're there so you finally acknowledge them and learn how to work with them to move past them right to be able to let them go and to prove yourself wrong and so this is a this is a month that starts the next few months where you're really finding your power in terms of what you have to offer the world like on a big scale pisces and so these are things that you're probably going to be really reflecting on on and off throughout december uh so yeah that is what i'm seeing for you pisces definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating with you i'd really love to hear what ends up happening for you guys this month and uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys in my other videos bye Hello, my lovely Arians. I'm so, so jealous of you. <laughs> Just like came out like word vomit, sorry. Uh, as a Libra, I admire my Aries peeps out there because you're my opposite sign and you're everything that I wish I could be, but that I am not because I'm a Libra, not an Aries. So um, anyways, hello Aries, what's going on? What's up? this month. So welcome to your December 2021 tarot and astrology reading where I blend tarot and astrology and my intuition to give you a reading of what your month could look like. This may resonate more if you're an Aries rising, but you may find some messages in here if you're an Aries sun or moon. So do keep that in mind. And anyways, with that all being said, let's get into what December has in store for you, possibly Aries. This is a general reading though, so keep that in mind. Um, for whatever reason, I'm getting hit with a lot of intuitive messages. So before we get anything to anything else, let me just say this, okay? Aries, I feel like you're at a crossroads. I feel like some of you could be living in the past. I feel like some of you feel like disappointed about something or actually feel like a disappointment in some way. There is a lot of confusion around where you're going, what you want, uh, your future, your future goals, the legacy that you're trying to build for yourself, the direction that you're going in, where you feel your purpose is, where you feel like you can just be alive. And also there could be power struggles in your life, authority, like issues with authority figures or people that feel like they are somehow higher than you. Um, it doesn't even just have to be like an actual authority figure. Maybe it's somebody that you look up to, or maybe it's somebody that just feels like they have more status than you. And December starts off a series of a period of time for actually like the next few months where you may start feeling like or you may start noticing these public figures or these people in your life that you once looked up to or you admired them in some way and you start kind of seeing them differently um, or you start seeing yourself differently and you start realizing that that's not what you want anymore what you thought you wanted for your life is no longer what you want and so your life could feel like you're going through a massive reconstruction that's starting this month, but that you will definitely notice by the time we get to January. Okay, so there is, it's basically like your goals, your future, the direction that you wanna go in with your life is under a massive reconstruction period and you're trying to figure out what it is that you truly desire. And it's kind of like, you know, it's you're kind of in for like a reality check in terms of career and your future and your goals and you know your your broader life you know vision for what you want to do in this life and the kind of life that you want to live is really being transformed and you're going to go through this very 
uh, this period of catharsis where you are trying to figure out what it is that you actually want and it's really starting now um, you could start noticing it may not be that intense just yet you could for some of you it could be but for others of you it could just feel like you're having thoughts like is this really what i want long term or am i really happy here or you're feeling kind of uh complacent right or you feel like you're at an impasse you feel like you're at a crossroads you feel like you have to it, it just can feel very much lately like you're about to go in a new direction but there can be a lot of confusion on where that is or what's happening. Um, and if what you want, if your prayers, so to say, are being answered, because we also have the prayer card here and we have confusion. And so I think your own intention, your own desires are being called into question. Is what you're doing, what you're intending to be doing? Is it what you truly desire? Is it what you truly want? And I really feel that coming up for you here. It's kind of like your intentions are confused. You're not really clear on your intentions. And I think that that's something big that's coming up for you in the month of December. And I also feel like you are being faced with, in some way or another, your true potential as the, your ruling planet Mars is moving into Sagittarius on December 13th. Uh, and so when it first moves in, those first couple days could feel a little weird, karmic, or bring up like a lot of past influences or patterns or something coming full circle from the past or something that you're taking action on from the past around that time. But, or you could be going back to something uh, around that time too. But I really see here that it's kind of going to be like a moment where you realize that you are not the person that you thought you were. But this is in a really, I think, amazing way. You're not the person that you used to be. And that really starts, I think, becoming clear to you this month with talisman here. You start really th seeing things in terms of experiences rather than just like, you know, mundane, you know, shit, you know, like mundane, boring shit. And you start realizing that it's more about the experience. It is more about what you're doing with your time rather than getting to a certain place. Now that could be a long-term lesson that starts this month. You may not realize that this month or right away, like I said, this month starts kind of like a three to four month cycle that we'll be into these next few months. So this may not come right away, but you could start noticing these themes this month, like I said. We also have encouragement here, and so I feel like this month is going to be very encouraging, whether by others or whether by yourself or just by the energy in general, signs from the universe, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to call it, it could be different for different ones of you, but I feel like this month you're going to be feeling very encouraged to go after things and get out of your comfort zone and to see the bigger picture on things. You are going to be also very encouraged to face possibly some kind of fear with moonlight here, to face some kind of past hurt, to face something that you may be feeling powerless over because we have you're powerless and that's okay. Uh, these are old cards that I made like forever ago, but um, yeah, so I feel like this month there is a sense of coming to terms with something that maybe you've been fighting for or that you've been determined about that has a sense of powerlessness or fear or lack of control behind it that you have to kind of accept or t come to terms with, something that you're letting go or some kind of ending uh, that is starting to happen that you're realizing this month. And I think also this month, it's important to keep in mind that if your external life, your vision for the future, where you're trying to go, your career, all of those things, uh, certain power struggles, if all of that feels chaotic, it's because it's actually mirroring the confusion within yourself of your own intention of what you actually desire, what you actually want. And so all of this is really reflecting back to you that there's something that's unsettled within you. There's something that's disturbed within you that needs to be faced this month. We also have this person or situation is a shaker, meaning that it's there to shake things up. It's here to shake you out of complacency. It's here to shake you out of stagnancy. So there could be something this month that does that, that kind of pushes you um, where it can maybe feel like things are frustrating or there's some kind of tension or there's some kind of ending or there is 
uh, some kind of change, um, I don't feel that it's going to possibly, uh, I, if it's a big change, it would probably be towards the end of the month. If it's a small change, it may be before that, but there's some kind of change happening here that may make you uncomfortable at first, but it's there to shake you out of a, a current situation or a current direction that you've been going in. We also have Dance Your Soul Out, which this card to me uh, really indicates that you need to move energy. Energy needs to move. There's stuck energy within you. One of the ways that you can do that is by dancing. You can do that by yoga. You can do that by moving, working out. You know what I mean? Getting out in nature, breathing techniques. There's meditation. There's tons of ways that you can move that energy. Um, but something needs to move. And this month is the month where that movement is starting for you. Now, for your tarot, and then we'll get to your astrology, we also have the Five of Cups here, which once again tells me that there's some kind of disappointment, there's some kind of letting go of the past, or letting go of guilt, shame, remorse, you know, um, this feeling of what could have been or what should have been, um, or this feeling of I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy, or what's the point anyway, like this feeling of loss in some way, shape, or form, or a sense of powerlessness, like I said, in some way, shape, or form, that needs to be faced this month, that you need to sit with and accept in some way so you can move that energy, so you can move through it. And then we have the Three of Wands, which tells me, once again, that you are finally moving forward. It may not happen super quickly, um, but you're finally like seeing you're seeing through things rather than like, rather than just seeing the cons, you're starting to see the pros of certain situations. You're starting to see ways out. You're starting to see that you have to move through things for things to move instead of just sit still because they aren't how you like it, right? And so, um, and you start to see a new vision for yourself, a new vision for what you want, your potential, where you wanna go and the, the journey that you wanna take. You start making plans and feeling inspired to initiate that new journey. And then we also have the Four of Wands, which tells me that you will definitely be getting to some kind of milestone with this since the four comes right after the three right and so it's like you're entering into a, a new period you know like a, a new phase of this of this book that you're in and you finally get to accomplish something or you finally get a sense of like okay i made some kind of progress you know it's some kind of milestone that's happening here this month uh some kind of celebration i don't believe it may be very big but it's not going to be like you know yay i won the whole goddamn thing right like i won the damn war <laughs> but it is a small celebration it is like you know still significant it's still awesome for you you know what i mean it's still going to make you feel like i can do this i have the potential i can move through this right and so yeah that is what i'm seeing with your cards aries so let's go ahead and get to your astrology so like i was saying i kind of talked about it throughout but you know we're in sag season we have all this sag energy we had an eclipse in sag and over the last like 18 months since May 2020, you've been learning major lessons in terms of education, learning, travel, your philosophies, your belief systems, your worldviews, your political views, your religious views, things like that. And so this month is really reflecting that a lot of these lessons you've been learning over these last 18 months. But what's even bigger this month is we have this Pluto Venus conjunction in your 10th house of career, authority figures, public image you know, your place out in the world, your place in the public, the direction you're going in, all of these types of things, your reputation, the legacy that you're building, the kind of life that you want to have, your vision for the future. And so with Venus and Pluto here, um, Venus is going to retrograde on Pluto. And so this is going to be a major reconstruction coming in this area, in these areas of life for you. And uh, over these next few months, moving into 2022. And so you know, this is going to be a time where you are reconsidering what successful means to you, what it means to have a successful life or to get to the top of the mountain, wherever, whatever the mountain is for you. It's going to be different for different ones of you. Um, what does it mean to get to the top of the mountain for you? What does status mean for you in your life, your reputation, certain authority figures, power dynamics in your life? These are all going to really come up and come into play over these next few months. 
and it's likely going to also involve social systems, social groups, social circles, networking, you know, all of these types of things. And so uh, those themes could be coming in. How does this deal with other people and, and larger groups of people and larger classes of people uh, and, and different ki kinds of people? Like all of this is really big. And so another big thing that we have coming in this month is the Saturn Uranus third and final square this year uh, from your 11th house to your second house. And this has been happening on and off all year. So on and off all year, there may have been this struggle between um, or these disturbances or uh, desires or inspirations for freedom and independence and individuality regarding finances, what you own, you know, what's important to you, what you value, your priorities, you know, your priorities have like radically shifted over the last few years, actually, and you want more independence when it comes to your income, your money, what you own, what's of value, uh, you want to have more independence and, uh, be able to have more freedom in that area of life. But there's been something clashing here with Saturn in your 11th house that could likely deal with society at large or social systems or social conditioning or friends or your place in the world, your inspirations, where you fit in in the world in some way. And so this is coming into focus again, you know, by mid to end month, we're really gonna be feeling that build up. And so, these lessons could start wrapping up where you finally, you know, are able to make the changes that you really need to make. Um, and then also by the end of this month, we have Jupiter moving into Pisces, which for you, Aries, is your uh, 12th house sector. And this deals with uh, healing and letting go and endings and seclusion, isolation, you know, really, really getting out of the everyday, you know, shit like the everyday mundane stuff and doing something a little bit more mystical spiritual healing etc and so you could be really focusing on that over the next year or so as jupiter is going to be in pisces for most on and off of 2022 and so you could find yourself learning more about spirituality or diving deep into healing modalities or holistic healing or um, something creative something that you know, really makes you feel things on a deep level, allows you to let go in some way and have faith in some way. Anyways, Aries, um, that is what I'm seeing for you in the month of December. Hopefully this ends up resonating. Definitely let me know down below if you had any messages in here uh, that resonated with you. I would really love to hear about it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hi Taurus, so welcome to your December 2021 tarot and astrology reading where I blend tarot and astrology and my intuition to give you messages about what I see possibly coming for you in December. This will resonate most if you're a Taurus rising, uh, but you may find some messages in here for you if you're a Taurus sun or moon as well. So Taurus, this is a really big time for you, man. Like you are finally ending a major cycle this month. I don't know if some of you guys can feel it. Uh, and I'd love to know how you guys are feeling this eclipse energy that we've had down below. We had that eclipse in your sign, kind of flushing out old things, but bringing in this like whole new and previewing this whole new cycle where the node is about to move into your sign. Um, but also we are ending this other cycle this rough cycle that you've been going through with the south node in your eighth house and the eighth house is a hard house you know it, it hits hard it rolls over really like life's kind of really icky things uh scary things and things that are very hard to deal with really big life changes death loss you know financial debt um things that can really cause us to kind of have like phoenix rising moments and it can be a time that we go through that can feel very uh, out of control. A lot of things can kind of feel out of our control. And so this eclipse that we just had on December 4th, I think was really bringing in a time where you've been through all of these crazy things in the last year, year and a half, really. And this was kind of signifying, I think, a wrapping up of a lot of those things. And so I feel like for a lot of you, even though you've been through a lot of these crazy things, I think this eclipse is really 
uh, marking the beginning of some kind of freedom or of a new way of looking at these things, like a, a release in these things and a newfound faith within yourself from these really hard and scary, out of control, chaotic situations that you've had to deal with over the last year. And I see that because your first few cards here are faith and release. And so I feel like, you know, through releasing a lot of these things that may have been hard to release, uh, you are able to come to this spot where it's kind of bittersweet, where you realize that, you know, you've went through so much change, so much flushing out, so much loss. You know, you could have been dealing with really difficult financial matters or your partner could have been dealing with a lot of really difficult stuff. You could have been dealing with a lot of really difficult life changes, death, you know, things like that. But through these things, you're kind of coming out the other side and you're able to see the higher purpose for these things in some ways, maybe not all of them. You know, some of them, it may take a little longer, but in some ways you're able to kind of have this your your faith is kind of restored in a weird way but in a new way it's like different it's not the kind of faith that you had before it's not it, it's coming from within and it's coming from you right it, it's coming from deep inside of you and we also have recovery here which i think is amazing and i feel like this month is really kind of this start to a major recovery period for you as we get ready for 2022, where right in January, the node will move into your sign, the North Node. And so it will be a massive time of learning about yourself and being able to focus on you while also learning a lot more about relationships in your life. And Mars has been moving through your seventh house of Scorpio the last few months. So you've been having to deal with a lot of changes or possibly frustrations or, uh, you know, for some of you issues or difficulties uh, regarding relationships in your life, significant relationships in your life, relationship dynamics, you know, things coming out that may have been hidden uh, or things coming to the surface that you hadn't seen before. And so even though this may have been um, a time already that has somewhat intertwined relationships in it for you. The next year and a half is really going to be um, some major learning periods for relationships, but I think because you've been through so much already that it's actually possibly not going to be as difficult as at least and this is just generally speaking not based on your own personal chart uh, if you would like a personal more personal reading i have those down below but um just generally speaking i think that you've that that you can handle this right like i don't think it's 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 as chaotic possibly as it was this year because this year in 2021 you had Saturn squaring your sign uh, with Uranus in it. And so there's been a lot of changes that you've wanted to make. There's been a large feeling of restriction on your freedom, your independence, your individuality, your self-expression on doing things that you wanna do and doing things in a unique and innovative way and you know, like stepping outside of your comfort zone and stepping outside of the box to do things in a different way. But there's been a lot of pressure from Saturn in your 10th house of career and authority figures and power struggles and, you know, uh, your reputation, your legacy, things like that. So it could feel like you've been very held back, delayed or restricted in some way, especially if you're a Taurus rising or if Saturn's been squaring your sun or moon in Taurus. And so I feel like this month in December is really wrapping all of that up. We're gonna go through one final Saturn Uranus square at the end of this month that could bring some pressure to the table, but I feel like all in all, you're able to go through some kind of breakthrough. You're able to um, kind of complete some kind of cycle. And so it could feel like so many different things are kind of like making themselves known to you this month. Like you're able to look at things in a completely new way. You're able to uh, really have experiences that wrap things up for you in a way that, that you know, 
that hadn't been previously, if that makes sense. I'm like trying really hard to explain this, but it's like really difficult for me for some reason. I'm kind of struggling over here. Um, so yeah, and we also have the come together card. So I feel like this month could be a month where you may need to come together with people in your life that are very important to you or people in your life that that you know have your back because honestly, Taurus, I feel like just from some of these cards and some of the transits that we're going through this month, it seems like there could be some trust issues and with certain people in your life or with a certain person in your life or a certain situation in your life where there may be some things coming up that are kind of showing you things that you hadn't seen before, uh, where you become aware of things that could be a little bit difficult or where you're going through some kind of challenge and you're, and the result or the finish line is kind of unknown because we have the mountain and into the unknown here. And so it can kind of feel like you're going up this mountain with a blindfold on um, in some situation in your life. And so do not be afraid to ask for help from other people. Do not be afraid to uh, allow other people's perspectives and ideas and to help you. That is going to be very important this month. Um, and I also see another reason why I'm saying this is because we also have the Seven of Swords and Deception um, or the Moon card, which is basically uh, can deal with deception and secrets and kind of shady stuff. So it kind of feels like to me and for some of you, this could be you. Maybe like you're having certain shady behaviors coming up, like you're uh, wanting to do something secretly or you're having the urge to do something secretly. And for others of you, it could just be someone in your life uh, that, uh, that this is happening with but and this may not be for all of you so I don't want you to freak out and think that like your boyfriend or your wife or whatever is doing something behind your back if you already don't have that suspicion then this is not for you right like um, and I would say if you have like a history of being paranoid then this may not be for you either like um, and it may not even be a significant other it could be a friend um, in fact I really feel like for many people it could be a friend or somebody that you work with, somebody in your career, something like that because of Neptune in your 11th and um, Jupiter, which rules Pisces where Neptune is at in your 10th. Um, Mercury is squaring those, uh, you know, placements um, or well, Mercury squaring Neptune from your 8th. And so there could be some kind, what I'm really seeing here is some kind of shady financial thing likely or something that was unknown um, or certain old behaviors or habits in the form of, or in a situation dealing with friends or people like acquaintances, etc. And so you do want to watch out on a month like this um, that you can trust things that are important, right? And what I mean by that is like if you're making a really big financial decision that you can trust it, right? Like if you are uh, paying a lot of money for something that you can trust it, like that you are trusting the right things um, because there could be something this month that is kind of shady that's revealed to you um, if you're not careful or that you could put your trust in something that may seem good but it may be not exactly what it appears. Like with this moon energy, it's kind of like something here isn't exactly what it appears. And it could be in different places for different ones of you, just depending on your own chart and all of that. Um, but it looks like it's coming to light this month because we also have the world card. And so, like I said, a lot of full circle moments this month. I think that, you know, a lot of Torians are likely going through time periods of relationship upheaval, upheaval with significant connections in your life. But I think it it is kind of a step up from dealing with all of the loss, death, debt, you know, all of that kind of stuff that you had been likely dealing with on and off the last like year and a half. Um, and so, and I think that you're at a point now that you've learned so much that you're able to deal with these things and that you will come out of it like way more trusting in yourself. And so with this world card, you are ending massive cycles and you are seeing things in a whole new perspective. You are seeing the world in, whole, in a whole new way. And your faith, like I said, is being restored, which I think is like really beautiful uh, for you guys as well. So we also have from my little old written cards here, time to stop running. 
So if this has been something that you've been trying to escape, which these cards could be signifying that too for some of you, it could be that you're trying to escape or avoid something uh, that you know that you know you need to face, some kind of secret that you have or something that you just haven't wanted to address. Um, this is a month that is going to make that very clear. We have underneath it all, you're scared and that's okay. And so for some of you, if there is something if there's some kind of challenge that you can't really see like where you're headed or you're kind of moving into this unknown uh, situation, then it's okay to admit that maybe you're having some fears or um, when you can allow yourself to just be scared, it actually helps so fucking much and it's actually how you deal with fear because then you settle down you're not fighting the fear which makes it 10 times worth worse which is causing the discomfort it's not the fear causing the discomfort it's your fighting it and trying to control it that is causing the discomfort and so when you allow yourself to kind of just accept that you're scared and that's okay like it starts dissipating and you're able to start moving through it and you're able to start like thinking more logically instead of so like you know in your <clears throat> reptilian part of your mind with the moon here moon rules over that um, because when you're scared you automatically go into that like deep subconscious part of your mind and you're thinking on a very like instinctive level you know like you know you're 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 in a fear-based mode uh, we also have like the storm is almost over and freedom and so like i said you're ending this year i think with this massive relief where you're like wow that was a lot of shit but i feel like like there's just some kind of breakthrough this month i really do feel that for you taurus where you're coming out on the other side and you're starting to feel free again you're starting to feel unrestricted um, and I think that that really sums up your December Taurus. Uh, we also have Jupiter moving into Pisces, which is your 11th house sector at the very end of the month, and it will be in Pisces most of next year. Uh, so this is, a, it's gonna be a time of expanding your friend circles, the groups you belong to, relating with people differently, uh, like-minded people, finding like-minded people, possibly getting very into spiritual endeavors or um, manifestation or, you know, things like that, getting really into like mystical and spiritual things. And then also we have the Venus-Pluto conjunction, uh, which happens, and, and Venus retrograde, which happens on the 19th. Um, and that is going to be in your ninth house. So for you in particular, this Venus-Pluto conjunction, it's a big deal in the sense that Venus is your chart ruler if you're a Taurus rising because Venus rules Taurus. So you definitely are going to be feeling that, but it's going to be more so in the sense where because it's in your ninth house, that's actually not a really bad place to have it. This can really change your perspective on who you are, your potential, and what you want out of life, how you view the world, your worldviews, your political views, your belief systems, higher education, things like that could really come into focus over these next few months with that Venus-Pluto conjunction. So anyways, Taurus, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Definitely let me know down below if this reading resonated with you, if this horoscope resonated with you and how your month ends up going. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Gemini? Welcome to your December 2021 tarot and astrology reading where I combine tarot and astrology to tell you what your month ahead could have in store for you. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Gemini, I would really like to know down below because I just feel like your transits are about to get really interesting. Um, and I would really like to know if you are seeing themes of like finances or maybe like occult or taboo topics, things that are kind of hidden or topics of power, success, the government, things like this mixed in with certain like belief systems, ideologies, uh, views, or somehow involving outcast or groups like uh, outcasted groups of people, cultural, revolutionary kinds of ideas, or basically like 
society and different labels or classes in society? Like, I know that's kind of like a weird question, but that's basically what I'm seeing here for you. This is get this is gonna get kind of fucking weird for you guys. Like, not even gonna lie, this month. Uh, so we have this Venus Pluto conjunction in Capricorn in your eighth house, right? Venus and Pluto conjunct, Venus going retrograde on Pluto on the 19th this month in December is signifying signifying some kind of major reconstruction regarding your finances or other people's money, finances that you share, what you think about success, uh, certain power dynamics or topics of the taboo, the mysterious psychology, but also it can sometimes signify loss, really li big life changes or changes in relationships or changes to your partner's money, things like that as well. But the ruler of that Saturn is in your ninth house of higher education belief systems, you know, how you view the world and in the sign of Aquarius, which rules like groups of people and stuff like that. And so I feel like, honestly, a lot of you guys could be getting into a lot of weird stuff over these next few months, like uh, maybe some conspiracies or something like that, which, you know, I'm not here to judge, you know, like shit, a lot of them end up turning out to be true these days. But um, yeah, it just seems like you're like you're taking an interest in things that are more hidden or more like occult than usual. And it's going to involve like the world at large or certain groups of people at large or uh, something along those lines. And so I'd really, and I'm seeing that in your cards too, uh, it seems like there could possibly even be certain things that feel out of your control or certain fears that you have regarding your beliefs or your worldviews or certain things that you're interested in or digging into that are a little bit more hidden or occulted or taboo, whatever. And so let me know down below if any of you are feeling that way. I know that's kind of a weird way to start this out, but uh, that's kind of what I'm seeing here. Like that's my interpretation of what I'm seeing here. But anyways, other than that, uh, December is a month for you where you are ending some major cycles uh, where you've been really taking a really hard look at self versus other for the last 18 months since May 2020, where you have had to learn a lot of lessons about yourself, your own identity, your own way of doing things, your, you know, your appearance and how you come across and what you want for your life, what you're interested in, what you desire versus your relationships and your beliefs and views on relationships and certain beliefs that you have about relationships and significant people in your life. And so you've had to go through a lot of karmic healing and karmic kind of wrapping up of things to do with those lessons that I'm seeing not here in your cards is too. Uh, your cards too, we have what is the lesson and are you seeing the pattern yet? So a lot of you guys could have been really seeing certain patterns revolving around you and your behaviors and your actions, but also the types of relationships that you find yourself in, certain dynamics and relationships. That is all coming to a massive head this month with that solar eclipse we had at the beginning of December. And so you're finally starting to kind of see things in a new light and you are, you've learned so much about yourself and so much about the people in your life or the types of people that you allow into your life that end up being significant relationships for you and the vision that you have for these relationships and how these relationships fit into your worldview or your belief systems or your partner's belief systems and worldviews. It's taught you a lot about uh, other people and relationships this month. That is like I think really a large part of December for you Gemini and then also this month we have, like I said, that Venus-Pluto conjunction happening in your eighth house of, you know, some of the more darker phases of life that we can go through, transformation, mortality, death, fear, financial issues, debt, you know, exchanges and money and resources or resources that we share or give or receive from others. So there's kind of like these these really large themes coming up in your life possibly with this Venus-Pluto conjunction and Venus going retrograde here where you may be really thinking about reconstructing your own wealth, your own finances, but also certain power dynamics in your life. You may go through some massive metamorphosis over these next few months. And I really do feel like it comes down to 
being a little bit more realistic and detailed with yourself because we have metamorphosis here and the details card. And so I feel like a lot of the details of how you've been moving about things or accumulating things in your life are going through a massive reconstruction period. But I think a lot of Geminis as well may have, especially Gemini Risings, may have went through certain endings and relationships. It doesn't just have to be romantic. It could be any significant relationship in your life over this last year and a half. And I think that you're becoming aware with Wizard of Awareness here on these matters, on these, you know, relationship issues or dynamics or uh, patterns that you've had in your life. And so for a lot of you, you could kind of feel like maybe you're growing apart in certain relationship situations, or maybe you could feel like, um, you know, that you yourself are kind of coming apart, but you're but you're aware of it and you're aware of where you maybe haven't been being true to you. Um, it's been kind of like a balancing act between focusing on you versus others, for focusing on you versus others, what you want versus what others want in your life that you've really been kind of karmically going through for the last 18 months. And that's really wrapping up this month because the nodes are gonna move out of your sign and your opposite sign uh, next month in January. Some other things that I see coming up for you, Gemini, is Mars is going to move into your seventh house, making that relationship space definitely a pretty big focus for the month of December as well. And I think that is really when there's gonna be some kind of action taken. And this happens on around the 13th where you start kind of having to put in actions into the lessons that you've learned. That is going to be kind of a time where you're finally moving forward with some of these really karmic lessons that you've learned in relationships or that you could see some kind of relationship changes occurring. We have the card impatience here and we have the card faith. So. For some of you, this could be about a relationship or this could be about something else in your life, whether your finances or some kind of challenge that you're going through at the moment where you're feeling a little bit impatient or you're feeling frustrated with something or someone and you're not sure how to proceed. And, you know, I think that the nodes in your signs have also been teaching you about how to be a little bit more patient and understanding with other people and not entirely base things off of your own philosophical viewpoint or your own ideology or your own belief system and actually kind of allowing others to um, have their own ideology and belief system as well but also learning the difference between belief and faith. A belief is something that we have an idea about but we attach to that idea because we think that we can count on it, right? Whereas faith is something that's more it's more internal. It doesn't necessarily need a belief and it's not the same thing as a belief. It's more so just like an internal knowing, right? And so I think that, you know, this month is possibly bringing up matters of faith for you and matters of belief for you as well, Gemini. We also have gossip and isolation. And so these are some other things that you could be seeing come up this month. Uh, your rolling planet Mercury is squaring Neptune, kind of like the beginning and middle of this month. And so you could be seeing themes of gossip or rumors or uh, things that just aren't true. Or you may want to be a little bit careful this month partaking in gossip. Uh, Gemini if this is you because it could lead to you feeling somewhat isolated or alone if you're not careful. For your tarot cards we have the two of wands and the six of pinnacles and I think this really goes with the financial theme that I'm seeing for you guys starting this month where it's kind of like an exchange of resources or money that you're figuring out here. It's like you're trying to possibly plan uh, for the future of something, possibly financially, but it's going to be very important that you pay, but you pay attention to the details because Venus is going to go retrograde. And I will tell you that this is likely not a great month for initiating something really big financially with Venus going retrograde, unless you already have Venus retrograde in your chart natally. Because of that reason, you know, because Venus is going to go retrograde, certain details may be overlooked if you're not careful. And so that's why I'm saying that. So it's going to be really important to make sure that you are really 
paying attention to these small things as hard as it can be. It can kind of feel like things are very broad or up in the air and you're not really sure how to grasp these certain small little details that you need. Um, the data or the information that you need to do what you're trying to do. We also have the Nine of Swords here and the Hierophant, which I think really goes back to what I was saying in the very beginning with Saturn in your ninth ruling over this Venus retrograde on Pluto. There could be some fears that are coming up here surrounding certain ideologies, views, belief systems, political views, worldviews, religions, you know, et cetera. Kind of like big problems or more like worldly problems, like kind of grand scale issues that you may be sucked into or worried about or that you may become a little bit obsessive about and how they end up affecting you, like worried about how they're gonna end up affecting you. So I would just say to kind of watch out for that this month. And once again, it kind of goes back to uh, faith. You know what I mean? Like having a general sense of faith and really also kind of addressing your fear and watching what information that you're taking in with the gossip card here and really making sure that things are actually factual and not just going off of what somebody else's opinion or perspective is, but rather the actual facts. And I know that can be hard on a month like this with Mercury, your ruling planet in Sagittarius, but Mercury will move into Capricorn on the 13th. And so I think that you will have more of a realistic idea after that of things. But um, even with that though, I feel like it's gonna be really important for you this month to stay grounded in reality and focusing on what you can control and letting go of what you can't. And I know that sounds so simple, but that is so big for you on a month like this and even moving into January, Gemini, because there are going to be things that come up that could easily suck you in. Um, and if you're not careful, then you may become a little bit paranoid or uh, like very worried about it. And so I think that it's really important for you to kind of try to focus on what's real and leave behind the things that are not in your control and move on to the next thing. So we also have the storm is almost over. And I feel like that's really relating to a lot of the changes you've been through over the last year and a half. Like you're really kind of um, coming into a time where you are finally like kind of ascending past a lot of these lessons that you've been learning and you're starting to implement them. And then we also have switch shoes, look at the other side. And so this month is also a really important month to make sure that you are considering other sides of situations and not just getting caught in one view with the Hierophant here. It's like the rules or the foundation of something is changing with this Venus retrograde on Pluto and Capricorn. The instruction is changing. And for some of you, the Hierophant could be representing a marriage or a corporation, an institution or something like that, that is causing some kind of fear in your life or some kind of worry or stress in your life as well. And we also have the outcast here. And so I think that for some of you, this could be something that is making you feel like you're on the outside or um, or you're trying to advocate for people that may be on the outside, so to say. Hopefully this is making sense, but it goes with your astrology and so I don't know. <laughs> like, um, but definitely let me know down below if this is resonating with some of you guys because it seems, I know it's kind of like specific in some ways, um, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. Either way, there is some kind of massive metamorphosis happening here that may feel partly out of your control uh, with some kind of big life change or financial situation that you're going through. For some of you, it may involve a relationship. Um, for some of you, it may involve some kind of like lawsuit or some kind of financial lawsuit. For some of you, it may involve a divorce or, you know, for some of you, it may involve uh, just, you know, getting your, your financial affairs in order or like going back and paying off old debt, old, old student loans or something like that. It could be as simple as that for some people. But those are the themes I'm seeing. I'm trying to just name the themes um, to make it a little bit more general, but I know not everybody can interpret like 
actual situations that those themes can relate to. So um, hopefully those ideas help you a little bit more. Also, we have Jupiter moving into your 10th house by the end of the month, which is going to be, I think, very expansive in regards to your career. You may end up getting very interested in healing or spirituality or something creative or artistic. You may end up wanting to expand your brand or your career, your business, etc., in a more artistic manner. This could also be a time where you are focused more on your future and your legacy and really just being at peace, you know, things like that. And then also we are going through the third and final Saturn Uranus square from your ninth house of higher education, travel, your belief systems, your political views, your worldviews, things like that, uh, to your 12th house of isolation and uh, closure, endings, you know, things like that. And so this could definitely be a time where you're trying to possibly break free of a system of something or there may have been certain like restrictions holding you back from feeling like you can have the freedom or alone time that you want or the seclusion that you want in some way. Um, so those are some ways that it could play out. But yeah, Gemini, that is basically what I'm seeing for you guys for the month of December. Hopefully there was some messages in there for you. Like I said, this is more for Gemini Risings though. But um, anyways, definitely let me know down below if there were any messages. I'd be really interested to hear uh, your feedback if you're a Gemini Rising. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hello, Cancer, and welcome to your December 2021 tarot and astrology reading. I hope you guys are doing well. And let's go ahead and get into your reading, Cancer. So December starts off a time period for you for the next few months that I'm not going to lie to you is going to be full of very deep and profound change, especially regarding your relationships and how you show up in the world and your social life and your place in the world, etc. This is a time where you are really going to be reevaluating what is important to you when it comes to relationships and how you show up in the world in general. And this is because we have the Venus-Pluto conjunction happening and Venus going retrograde on Pluto in your opposite sign in your seventh house of Capricorn. And so your seventh house is going through a massive reconstruction, a very deep reconstruction that is really going to change the way that you look at success in relationships and it's also going to change how you feel about relationships what interests you about relationships and what you're attracted to and also your values and what's important to you in a relationship what makes you feel secure stable all of these types of things that is i think going to be the really big theme that is building in the month of december for you until venus goes retrograde on the 19th so i'm not going to lie to you for some cancer risings this could be a massive change in your relationships um, or in your marriage or in a certain significant relationship in your life if you have a business partner you know or it could be from the opposite end where maybe your partner is going through a massive change or maybe someone that is a significant person in your life goes through a massive change it's going to play out differently for different ones of you but either way there is some kind of big change happening here a massive reconstruction of what is valuable within a relationship. I feel like for a lot of you, this could be bringing up insecurities, whether in yourself or in, within somebody important in your life, whether it be your significant other or you know just a, an important relationship in your life. It could really kind of dig up some insecurities and some old behaviors or toxic behaviors, so to say, that need to be worked through. And I also feel like for some of you, this could involve finances within a relationship as well. This could be involving your partner's finances or the finances that you share or resources that you share. Insecurities over resources and abundance could also be something else that 
you see coming up here for you. This could also be uh, certain shadiness in relationships or old wounds that get brought up, old traumas, old conditioning within relationships that get brought up as well. And I, I just really see here, because we have the cleaning house card, that you are cleaning house in terms of relationships. And it won't mean that all your relationships are going to end. In fact, a Venus retrograde can actually bring things back, um, bring relationships back together and things like that. For some of you, you could have exes coming back around, wanting to talk or something like that. But either way, I think that you're going through a massive cleaning house period. The structure of your relationships is changing over these next few months. And you are really getting rid of things that don't work for you anymore. You're addressing relationship dynamics. You're dealing with old issues or old toxic uh, behaviors or behavioral patterns within relationships, uh, things like that, you know, and like, like for an example, Venus Pluto could bring up like this attraction to something intense or mysterious. And so some of you could like have this random like interest in doing something shady within the relationship or like keeping some kind of secret or having an affair, like worst case scenario, because we do have moonlight here. So it does tell me that there can be certain things like hidden or toxic traits that do come up within relationships. And it's gonna be different for different ones of you. You know, these are more extreme examples. Pluto is kind of extreme, but it for some, it just may be a, a toxic self-sabotaging pattern or a toxic pattern of like, like not communicating correctly because you're fearful about something, you know, like, or your partner going through those patterns. Like it, it's gonna be different. So I'm not trying to like fear monger you here. I'm just letting you know, these are some themes that could start coming up in the very near future. But either way, there's some kind of, there's something coming to light within your relationships that needs to be worked through. And I think that's the main point here. I also think it's interesting because we have rock bottom here twice in two different, in my little old card deck I made, and then also in this card deck. And so it does seem like you're getting to the root of something within a relationship. You're getting to the root of a certain issue or a variety of issues regarding relationships in your life and regarding how you show up in the world and how relationships affect you personally, Cancer. And so these are really big things that are coming up. This is a month that is really starting a, a certain type of enlightenment to do with things coming to the surface in your relationships and addressing cracks and, you know, cracks and issues within the foundation of certain relationships in your life. Um, and we even have soulmate here. So that once again tells me this month is going to be very much revolving around other people in your life, Cancer. But other than that, we also have this massive, you know, eclipse uh, that we just had in your sixth house, which is really signifying this kind of closure that is happening that you've been going through, like this, this time period that you've been going through for the last 18 months since May 2020 of the south node in your sixth house in Sagittarius of health, work, day-to-day -day mundane tasks and routines. And so this eclipse is really kind of marking the end of that cycle. And so you could be going through a lot of changes in this regard. You could have been really working on health-related stuff or um, work-related stuff, you know, things kind of revolving around your routines and your philosophies and belief systems and the way that you think about these routine health topics in your life, your lifestyle things like that, um, habits, certain bad habits. And then Mars is moving into your sixth house on December 13th. So this is definitely marking a time where it's like time to put what you've learned into action. Um, it's gonna be a time of really, you know, possibly for some, some of you uh, starting some kind of new diet or starting some kind of new uh, health routine or exercise routine or work routine or a new project in work or new task that you have to do that you're responsible for. Other than that, we also have the Saturn Uranus square happening for the third and final time this year from your eighth and 11th house. So this could definitely be a time where once again, it could be bringing up some kind of social aspect where you've been wanting more freedom or individuality 
regarding your social life or getting out into the world or your place in the world, but there may have been some kind of restriction, delay, setback, or responsibility within your shared resources and finances or certain financial obligations that you had, big kind of life changes that kept holding you back. And so that could be coming to the forefront again by the end of this month. So, but uh, other than that, we have Jupiter moving out of your eighth house and into your ninth house as well at the very end of the month. And so that could be really signifying um, a massive time of expansion regarding learning, travel, spirituality, healing, and really getting out of your comfort zone and learning new things and expanding your views. And so I think that's gonna be really big for you in the year of 2022, Cancer. So um, I think that's, that's probably gonna bring a lot of opportunities and open doors with it, basically. So some other things that we have in your cards, we have the Emperor uh, and the 10 of Pentacles. And so once again, this really tells me that I think certain foundations that um, and certain power dynamics in relationships and with other people are being called into question and you're being called to really work on these foundations, but also your vision for the future with these foundations and what success looks like in relationships and in your social life with other people in significant one-on-one -on -one relationships in your life and also how you show up in the world. And so this could definitely be a time this month where you're busy, but you're also having to address certain things that, you know, dealing with your future, your future goals and things like that within relationships. Then we also have justice and the devil here. And so I feel like some kind of, like I said, something is coming to light regarding possibly old toxic patterns or behaviors or conditioning within relationships and the truth about them could be coming out or seeing another side to them. This could also be a big decision in relationships to either kind of resort back to old ways or to do something in a new way or a big decision where you're weighing out consequences or pros and cons to a situation in your life but either way, I feel like this month is bringing some, some truth to the surface in regards to other people and your significant one-on-one -on -one connections. We also have cheer yourself on, be your own biggest cheerleader, which I think this is a month where you just have to do that. With all of this stuff coming up with other people, this is a month where you don't wanna forget to you know, take care of yourself to remember who you are, to remember that you are a badass and you got this and you can do this. This is a month where you really have to be your, your, your biggest cheerleader, you know what I mean? We also have the rock bottom card, like I said, rock bottom, now you rise. And so it's like you reach this bottom or this root, I more see it as like you're reaching the root of certain psychological shadowy like issues in relationships where you finally are able to reach this and then so you are finally able to move through it and past it. We also have time to find yourself and so this could be a month that kind of starts this period of time where you're really reflecting on who you are, like I said before, and how you show up in the world. We also have bring it back to you, mirror, mirror. And with the justice card here as well, I feel like there are certain issues that may arise that may seem like they're happening to your partner or you know, significant connections in your life, but it's important to also bring it back to you and your part and not just completely focus on, oh, it's all their fault or blame everyone else for everything. It's also gonna be very, very important to see the other side and to bring it back to you and to understand that things are mirroring things within you as well. And then we also have so what, and basically what this means is, when you reach a certain point, it kind of gets to this point where you're like, you know, where you're unwilling or you're kind of like stuck and you're kind of like, okay, um, what if this happens or what if that happens or whatever? Um, and this is like, so what? You, like, what are you gonna do about it basically, right? Like, what are you gonna do about it? Can you even do anything about it? And if not, then what is sitting here stirring on it going to do? And that may be something that you need to keep in mind this month or may need to hear this month about a particular situation. You know, it's kind of like, okay, what now? Like, 
I can't keep wasting time on doing this because it's not getting me anywhere. So now what, you know? And you may need to get real with yourself and do that. Like this is a month about really getting real with yourself. It's kind of like a reality check, like I said in my December astrology video, where it's going to be a time of facing certain realities that may have been kind of in the shadows, but that have been lurking there for a while because there's something wrong with the foundation of something in our lives that needs to be addressed. So that is what I'm seeing for you this month, Cancer. Uh, definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating. I definitely would really love to hear your feedback this month, especially if you're Cancer rising and what happens for you in terms of relationships or at least significant connections within your life this month. And uh, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate your support and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up my fellow Leo risings, or if you're a Leo sun or moon, this may resonate for you too. Uh, but welcome Leo, welcome to your December 2021 reading. Let's go ahead and get into your reading. So 2021 has been a year, am I right? You've been really ramping it up in terms of independence, individuality, freedom within your career, your uh, reputation, what you want to do in the world, your public image, you know, all of these things have been very uh, eccentric this year for you. This has been a year where you've really been seeing just how much you want in terms of your life, your potential. Sorry about that, Leo. So this has been a year where you've really had to look at your relationships as well. You've learned a lot of really big lessons in relationships, like how to be more mature in relationships and also, also lessons in terms of like settling down what you want for your future, what is important to you and what isn't, where you're going, your potential, and the kind of partner that you want to be with and boundaries within a relationship. You know, you've learned a lot about your relationship dynamics and a lot of Leo Risings especially have likely went through um, some breakups in 2021, you know, some endings in relationships. It doesn't just have to be romantic either, but this is a time where a, re the relationship life can be a little bit rough, not going to lie, you know, there can be certain level of detachment or distance within your relationships that you've been really having to address this year. And there's kind of been this push and pull between what you want for your future, individuality, freedom, independence versus where you may be feeling held back in terms of a relationship, work, and certain people in your life and how to kind of navigate those situations. It's going to be a little bit different for each of you. Some of you may feel like the relationship is more important, you know, and so you may feel a need to kind of tone down what it, what, what it is that you want for your life, your career, the, your future, your goals, your long-term, you know, legacies, your reputation, etc. And then where others of you may feel like your future is more important, your career is more important or whatever, but there definitely has been some kind of clash between what you want to do in your life, your long-term vision for your future versus the relationships in your life and kind of where those relationships may be stunting your growth or holding you back. And so that is really what, you know, 2022 or 2021, sorry, has been about for you. Now, another big thing, it has been about finding your passions, what you love, what you enjoy, what, and doing a lot of healing in regards to children, creation, your joy, your inner child, your self-expression, what you're passionate about and certain ideologies and beliefs that you have about things that you're passionate about, about children, about self-expression, etc. And also your place in the world, friends, social circles, the social circles that you interact with and move in and out of. And so those have also been, those areas of life have also been really, really relevant, relevant in the year of 2021. In December, Leo, we have this kind of like grand finale of this year, but also we are simultaneously starting a lot of really big things that are going to kick us off into next year. And so what I really see here for you, Leo, is for December, is that this solar eclipse in Sagittarius could have brought a certain level of 
empowerment with it, courage, empowerment, feeling very good about like yourself and where you're going, or it could have brought some big changes in regards to what you're passionate about, your romantic life, your love life, you know, where you want to add more joy, play, and happiness and fun into your life. And also you've been learning a lot of karmic lessons to do with fun and passion, and love and romance and sexuality as well. There could have been a lot coming up from the past with these things that you've had to address and karmically sort out. Like when is when does it become too much? You know, when does fun become too much fun or become unhealthy or become you know, not structured enough or not disciplined enough. And so those could have been things that you were addressing as well throughout this year. But this could also be coming up this month in the month of December. And something else that I see here for you guys is that we have in your cards here, your external life is reflecting your internal life. So if you're dealing with a situation this month, outside of you it could be that it is a reflection of something going on within you where you may be looking at the situation as the problem but actually the issue is within you and what you're feeling about the situation so you may need to reflect on that there could be a lot of mirroring this month because we also have the justice card and so this could be really like showing you another side of something or holding up like a mirror to you where you're having to get very honest with yourself and make a very important decision where you are weighing out the pros and cons of a situation. We also have let it all go, let it all fall away, it will be okay. These are like little cards that I made a while back. But um, so this could be a month, Leo, where you are making some big endings uh, where you are changing something in your life. For some of you, it could be your love life. For some of you, it could be something that you're passionate about, a hobby. Uh, for some of you, it could be certain friend groups, social circles, a career change, something like that. But there's definitely something here that you need to let go of. And I feel like for some of you, it could be something that you are hanging on to from the past like something that you've been very sentimental about that like a past version of you has really been holding on to a certain situation in your life because of the history there of the past that led up to that situation and so you don't want to let it go and so you hold on to it like a like a talisman and so this could be a month where you're finally letting something go that you've held on to for so long um and where you're also feeling a little bit more reflective and a little bit more secluded like where you may be secluding yourself a little bit more or at least wanting seclusion in some way like where you're trying to maybe get away from something in your life or take a break from something in your life is something else that could really be happening here. But I feel like either way, it's like you've been living in a world that has been, you've been living your life due to something from the past that has brought you into where you're at in life, but you're still holding on to certain things because of the history there. Like I said, like, but is it like a ghost land now? You know what I mean? Like there's nothing there for you anymore, basically. And you can, I mean, you can keep the talisman with you to, you know, kind of remind you where you've been, but are you making choices based off of something that's not even your life anymore or a current version, an old version of you that's not a current version of you, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. It's like kind of hard to discuss, but that's kind of what I'm getting here. We also have this situation is important for your growth. And so something that you could be letting fall away this month or something that you could be ending this month or changing this month is very, very important for your growth. So what I'm kind of getting here, Leo, is like you feel like you need to go in a certain direction or like you need to make a change, but there could be a certain level of like, putting it off with the dissipating card here like you're trying to distract yourself from it like you're kind of trying to put it off in some way it's like i don't know if i for sure want to do this and so like because with justice here it's like you're weighing out like the consequences of doing this for some of you it could involve a certain level of security a certain level of stability um and so you may need to go back to the drawing board you know what i mean because we go from the four of pinnacles to the three of pinnacles so we are like going back a step. And so it's kind of like there's something here that needs to be let go of. 
but I do feel like you have help and you're able to rework the situation in some way if you really want to. You're able to figure it out, basically. You're able to find a solution. We also have the card expansion and acceptance, and this is also what I'm really seeing for you guys this month, Leo. It's like you're coming into a time where you're ready to grow and you're kind of like what you're kind of becoming very aware of what's hindering your growth and a lot of it has to do with things that you're holding on to from the past like and even if it seems like oh well it's in my life now but it's in your life now because of what led up to it being in your life but what led up to it being in your life does not is not the only reason or excuse for you to keep it around, right? Hopefully that makes sense. It's like if you have like a toxic friend or something in your life, let's say, and you guys went through a lot together, you have a lot of history together, and you guys were there or they were there for you during some really crazy times a long time ago, and so this friend is still in your life, but they're super toxic and they're draining you and they're just like, you know, constantly taking from you and it's just become a situation that's like really worn you down, but you feel like you have to be loyal. You feel like you have to stick around. For some of you, this could even be a relationship, a family member, whatever. It does not mean that you have to stay just because your history, right? Does not mean that you can't keep them at a distance or love them from a distance or for some people like completely cut them out. You know, if you really need to, if that's what it takes, it doesn't mean that you can't make that decision just because of your history, your past, etc. And so that's really important to remember. And I think that comes with a certain level of acceptance of the truth of what's really happening, you know? And so that's something else that I feel for you guys is coming in December. And then we also have creation and creation. Sorry about that, Leo. I keep being interrupted <laughs> but as i was saying um creation is the last card you have and this is actually i believe a throat chakra card because it is in gray which also deals with truth and creation is what the fifth house sagittarius is all about for you and we are in sagittarius season so you have like the sun mercury and mars will be traveling through your fifth house so this is going to be a very creative month for you like i said i feel like you're going to be going back and getting to the basics getting the formula right before you really stabilize things again um in regards to something in your life whether it be passion love romance you know something along those lines now something else i see coming up for you in december leo with venus conjunct pluto in our sixth house of capricorn this is bringing up health work and day-to-day -day routine stuff where does something need to be completely reconstructed in this area i'm not gonna lie leo if you've been neglecting your health or things that are valuable your priorities may need to be adjusted okay things that are valuable in the sense of your health your work your day-to-day -day responsibilities that need to be done if you've been neglecting something here or if you've been putting something off not focusing on something or whatever this could be a time where that kind of comes to the surface and you have to address it finally you don't like you no longer can just keep putting it off um, so if there's something going on that's health related especially i feel like here a task or a day-to-day -day thing that needs to be taken care of a day-to-day -day obligation responsibility whatever take care of that before the 19th okay of december because if not, your priorities regarding your health, your day-to-day -day routines, et cetera, are gonna be going through a massive change and transformation over these next few months and into 2020, uh, sorry, 2022. I'm like all fucked up here with the years <laughs> in this video so far, but um, yeah, so just be on the lookout for those things, not to scare you. This is really just to help you, to forewarn you that health and work and day-to-day tasks and responsibilities, obligations are going to be coming to the forefront majorly over this these next few months. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of things that are important. This could be a massive change in your routine, a massive change in your work, your job, your health, um, your diet. I mean, something is getting reconstructed here. This could also be have something to do or tie into your relationships in some way or your significant other or someone in your life because Saturn is in the seventh and Saturn will be ruling this Venus retrograde on Pluto. So something else is Jupiter is going to be finally moving into Pisces, which is our eighth house of other people's money, our partner's money, our partner's finances. 
I kind of see here like your partner, if you are in a committed relationship, could be going through some really big change or coming into uh, some big change, but eventually may have some opportunity here with Jupiter in the eighth house, which rules over kind of like your partner's money and finances, but also your own shared resources and finances. And so this is a time where you could really be addressing uh, financial matters and trying to expand what you invest in, trying to expand your finances, get out of debt, etc. But this could also be a time where you are kind of careless and rack up a lot of debt or financial issues if you're not careful with Jupiter in the eighth. Um, I feel like because Jupiter is generally more benefic and it's in its home sign, that may not be the issue, but you do just want to make sure that you are not going overboard with something regarding financial stuff. So keep that in mind. But And that is going to be mostly into 2022 as well with Jupiter and Pisces. So anyways, let me know down below if this resonates, Leo. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback um, as a Leo rising myself and hear what you guys go through this month. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Virgo? Welcome to your December 2021 tarot and astrology reading where I combine both tarot and astrology to give you some things that you could see in your month ahead. So hopefully you guys are doing well and let's get into it. So Virgo, December is a month that is really kind of bringing in this focus on your love life, your relationships, what you love and what is important to you and what is successful or necessary uh, regarding love, romance, relationships, but also even children and your interest and, you know, creativity, hobbies, etc. And so this is a time where you are going to be going through some massive shadow work, so to say, in those areas where there's going to be a lot revealed uh, that maybe was kind of confusing, hazy, or foggy in the past. I really feel like something is being dug up for you. Something is coming to the surface regarding how you approach love and relationships, but also on top of that, your interest, any kind of love affairs or past love situations, and really addressing any fears, paranoia, jealousy, possession, like uh, obsessiveness, betrayal, any kind of like shadow attributes to do with love relationships, but also it could be friendships for some of you as well. And in regards to children and hobbies, work, creative projects, etc. This is a time that this December is really bringing up for you things from the darkness, things that were kind of hidden from you before, things that seemed uh, shady in the past, and things that could be seeming shady to you now for you to examine and look at on a more psychological level and to really understand what it is that is necessary for you and the foundation uh, or the foundations of romantic partnerships in your life and also connections in your life and where your passions lie, the foundations of your passions, your hobbies, your interests, and your love life, basically. This is all coming up very, very majorly for you because Jupiter is also moving into your opposite sign of Pisces by the very end of December. And Jupiter was here like spring, summer of this year in 2020, so you are 2021. So you may have got kind of like a sneak peek of what this was going to be like, but with Jupiter moving into your opposite sign, it's going to be a time of expansion, opportunity, and growth and healing in relationships for you and how you present yourself to other people in the world in general. And so this month kind of starts that. And then we also have the Venus retrograde happening on Pluto in your fifth house of all those things I named before, love, interest, hobbies, children, uh, passion, intimacy, sexuality. So all these themes are really coming up. Where have you kind of either had a lack of boundaries or maybe where have you had too many boundaries? Where have you built, built like a wall around, you know, certain insecurities, fears, or, you know, 
worries regarding love, creativity, and passion. And this is a month that is really going to start breaking those walls down so you can get deep and understand what's really going on behind the scenes with yourself and what you're into, what you really want, um, and possibly in your love life or with a situation with your children or a creative passion, etc. So that is like the really big thing this month. But also we had that eclipse in Sag, which was in your fourth house. And so you're also really kind of going through this ending phase or ending period that you've been in since May 2020 regarding your home, family, what you view as your roots, your foundation, where you're from, your ancestry, your heritage, your culture, all of these like really deep roots that you have within family and home life uh, have really been getting brought up over this last like 18 month period. And you've had to take like a really hard look at your beliefs about your family, your beliefs about your roots and where you come from and your beliefs about settling down or having a home or having freedom when it comes to settling down like all of these things have been really coming up for you but also career and considering different options when it comes to career success your direction your future but also where you want to settle down and so there's been kind of like this balance playing out here uh in regards to work versus home and family and your personal life and also work day-to-day -day routines and responsibilities and your love life. And so there's really this kind of like, you know, you could really feel like starting in December and possibly for the next couple months that you're kind of like trying to find a balance between these different areas of life in some way. You could get really into work, you know, with Saturn in your sixth house, it's definitely been a time where there's been increased restriction, pressure, stress, or uh, responsibility or obligations surrounding your work and your day-to-day -day routines, the day-to-day -day task and errands that you have on a day-to-day -day basis that need to be done, and also health and how that affects your health and figuring out your health in general, figuring out your diet or what's good for you or how to be in good health. You know, the sixth house is about illnesses and things that kind of bring our vitality down. And so it's been a time of really figuring out what's good for you and uh, what's good for your health, but also certain work situations that you've been going through. And so I really feel here, Virgo, that this is a month that is really pushing you uh, towards something that like some kind of futuristic thing and what i mean by that is like you're really starting to consider what it is that you want out of life what direction you want to go in and where you want to end up because we have the destiny card here and so this really aligns with that north node finishing up its cycle in your 10th house of career reputation your future etc and so you're really trying to figure out where it is that you want to go and there could also be some impatience coming in this month surrounding those things that I've named off, surrounding your future, surrounding things that you're trying to, uh, you know, grab onto things that you're trying to build for yourself or uh, work or a relationship. There's some kind of impatience coming in this month that it's like you've been waiting for something or you've been like working towards something. And maybe there is some kind of uh, slowdown or delay that happens because we do have the Saturn Uranus square starting to build again from your sixth and ninth house. And that's been another thing you've been dealing with all year. Where have your belief systems, your worldviews surrounding your day-to-day -day task, your health, your work, your day-to-day -day routines, how, where have they been kind of clashing, right? Where you've been possibly going through a lot of erratic changes and upgrades in the way that you see the world, your world views, your belief systems, your political views, your religious views, like you've been really kind of breaking free of like a lot of old limiting belief systems um, over like really the last couple years. But this year, especially, it's possibly clashed with your day to day routines, your day to day life, your work, uh, you know, your job, your, your co-workers or something like that. And I also really feel like 
Virgo, you've been really possibly feeling like an outcast at work or you've been possibly feeling like an outsider at work. Like maybe you see things in a way that other people don't. Maybe, you know, what you, uh, what you value or what's important to you isn't important to other people or they just look at you weird or or you just feel different for whatever reason you know and so i think this month could really be bringing that to a head in some way where it's like you're able to finally get through some kind of breakthrough with that now we also have intention here and so i think that this month it's going to be really important to focus on what it is that you're intending. And I think that's what's really coming to the surface with this destiny card here, what I was talking about, about your future and what you wanna build, like what is your intention? And there could be some impatience or delays around it, like I was saying, um, but it's because that something's out of balance. It's like, if you feel like you're, you're working towards something, but you're kind of hitting brick walls or it's kind of slowing you down, it's because something's out of balance. And so that thing needs to be embraced or, um, you need to find a way to rebalance the scales because something is out of balance here, if that's how you're feeling this month. I also feel this month that you could be like somehow learning something new or extending your education ex in some way. Um, there's something here because we have the education card and that makes sense with these ninth house transits. It's like either you're helping educate someone else or you're educating yourself on something, you're learning something new. And it could even be with other people or like a work thing, or you are reading something and learning something or taking some kind of course or something like that. But also with the Come Together card here, I feel like this is a month that is for some of you may be bringing you back together uh, in certain relationships. And what I mean by that is, if you, well, first off, uh, for some Virgos, you could experience like exes coming back around in some way or past relationships or themes or patterns from past relationships like resurfacing because this is a time that needs to be like that energy needs to be transmuted for you to be able to move through it and move on. But also, I feel like if your relationship that you're currently in, if you're in a relationship has been kind of stagnant or feeling a little bit drained, this is a month that will start ramping that up, especially by the end of the month and into January. Like this is a month where it's kind of like do or die. Like we're gonna either figure this out and get really deep into this, get really deep into the bottom of this, which could bring a lot of you guys back together. It could like reignite the relationship, so to say. That may not be for all of you guys though. There could be some of you guys that realize like, okay, yeah, this isn't for me or this wasn't what I thought it was or there's things that come up that you didn't know about. So it just really depends on on your situation. You know, it's gonna be a little bit different for different ones of you. I'm just giving you what I kind of see, the different possibilities that I see here. And we also have embraced vulnerability. And I think this is really important with your astrology as well, because this is a month where you really do have to allow yourself to be vulnerable, even though that can be hard. You may need to allow yourself to get to the root of something, but to do that, it involves a certain level of being real with yourself and within the relationship, because we also have what mask are you wearing? And so this could be a time where you really start seeing that maybe you're wearing a mask or maybe you're you've been kind of doing things not in alignment with who you really are or how you really feel. And so this is a time where that illusion can start to lift. But at the same time, you could be doing it to kind of fit in or because you don't wanna like rock the boat or be different, etc. So those are some other things that could come up for you, Virgo. We also have the two of wands. So I do feel here like you are really kind of taking the next step with something that you've initiated or that you are like planning something, you're moving forward with something this month. You're kind of trying to figure something out is kind of what I'm getting here, Virgo. It's kind of like, okay, what's the next move? Where do I go from here? And how do we get there, right? Like, and we also have the Princess of Cups, uh, and so, which is basically like the Page of Cups. And so I think it's kind of like, you know, this is a month where you may feel very, inspired to follow your feelings, follow your intuition, follow your heart, follow the things that you love. But 
there may be some things within that with the moon here that are not quite clear or that are kind of confusing or like I was saying this really goes with the other stuff that I was saying where things are coming to light uh, where things are appearing that you hadn't seen before your perception could be shifting here on how you see love and the direction that you're going with with love or with your passions and things that you love or children um, in some kind of way it's like you're seeing them in a new light and so that is basically it though that i'm getting here for you uh virgo mars moves into sagittarius your fourth house on the 13th and so that is going to be a time where you are really um you know making some changes in regards to your home and family life and where that home and family sector is going to come into focus for you and then also Actually, I think that it, that's it. Venus is going to retrograde on the 19th on Pluto, and that's when I think the craziness will start. There may be some craziness before that, but that's when I'm really looking at here. So anyways, um, let me know down below if this ends up resonating. I'd really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Libra? Welcome to your December 2021 Tarot and Astrology reading where I blend Tarot and Astrology and my intuition to give you a possible forecast for your month ahead. Do remember these are general, so I can't win them all, okay? So um, anyways, your rising sign will resonate most. You may find some messages if you are a Libra sun or moon though as well. So let's get into it. So Libra, December is a month a month okay but december is a month that i think is really going to possibly bring up some cracks in your foundation and what i mean by that is some cracks within your home your living arrangements your family your family dynamics your living situation your your home and family sector okay also if you uh, own property or real estate or into real estate or something like that um, then this would come up here as well or if you're trying to buy a home or whatever like something here is changing in the home and family sector with home and family dynamics or with people in your family your parents there is something here that is changing or coming to the surface or that needs to be addressed in some way this is really the big thing happening for December and that's going to lead into January as well. So do keep that in mind. I really feel like Libra, there are certain things that, you know, may have been hidden or may have been that that maybe you've been hiding from yourself to do with your past, your childhood or certain patterns that keep causing you to possibly participate in situations that you end up wondering how you got into, you know what I mean? Because this part of the sky can also bring up your home and childhood, uh, your, your, you know, past and how you were raised and things like that. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm sorry if the sound sounds a little bit different because uh, my phone's dying, so I had to plug it in so I can't use my mic. But um, yeah, anyway, so that is basically like one of the big things coming this month libra and then also we have jupiter moving into pisces at the very end of the month which is your sixth house sector which is going to deal with a lot of you know expansion and growth and self-care this is going to be really about taking care of yourself your health expanding in the ways that you go about things on a day-to-day -day basis the task that you do and how you really want to evolve and grow in the ter in in terms of your health your day-to-day -day work and responsibilities the tasks that you do on a day-to-day -day basis i could see a lot of you guys like into 2022 getting into like yoga or some kind of like spiritual or creative routine that really helps you move energy or release energy or that helps you heal in some way getting into different healing modalities holistic healing etc that could be something that you see coming up in 2022 that starts at the end of this month kind of back to just december we also uh had that solar eclipse that happened in your third house sector and i feel like December is also a month with Mars entering into your third house sector where you're kind of like on this quest, right? I feel like you're looking for something or you're seeking something, you're looking for answers or you are really kind of 
getting out and about more or exploring your environment more, exploring your city or your town more, like wanting to go on adventures, wanting to uh, express yourself in new ways, and also really kind of reevaluating your belief systems, your thoughts, your community, things like this. And so with Mars moving into that third house for you on the 13th, and it'll be there for quite a few weeks, um, this is a time where you're going to be really wanting to speak your mind. You're going to be really wanting to do certain things, get out of the house, explore. Um, you're going to be learning new things, all of those types of things. So I also see a lot of that coming for you uh, in December. So basically, other than that, we have like this Saturn Uranus square, which is happening from your eighth house to your fifth house. And so this could be a month that... You know, you've been kind of going through hits of this like all year, but this could be, you know, this month it's going to kind of build again. And so you've been likely having a lot of shakeups in terms of maybe like life changes or life crises or financial matters, debt, you know, ex money exchanges or shared money and resources that you share with a partner or another person or that you get from a bank or whatever the case may be versus your passions, love life, sexuality, children. And so there could be these ties kind of coming in because the fifth house is the house of fortune and the eighth house is the house of death. And so somehow <laughs> there's like these possible big changes that you've went through, but somehow they end up like helping you in some way or somehow they end up being weirdly fortunate. I think that a lot of you guys are kind of like going through this push and pull between like massive change and then kind of like having to like settle down and like process it all and figure it out and it like really changes your self-expression and how you go about expressing yourself and what you have to offer to the world and so there could be kind of like a lot of that going on but I also feel here with Saturn in your fifth Libra that you've been really You've possibly been dealing with some sexuality issues or even some guilt around love, sexuality, passion, children, etc. And so there could be some hardships or some increased stress or responsibility or restrictions happening in that regard that you could have noticed uh, throughout this year. And that will unfortunately continue into 2022 because Saturn will still be in your fifth. But um, either way, though, I feel like you're learning some important lessons or you may be having some important breakthroughs with those things by the end of December. So let's get to your cards. Um, we have, like I said, we have expansion here, which really goes with what I was kind of saying before with Jupiter moving into your sixth house. It's like going to be a time of really expanding your knowledge and your growth in terms of health and vitality and wellness and your day-to-day -day routines and tasks and stuff like that. And so I feel like this month, you're definitely feeling that like adventurous Sag energy in your third. It's like you're seeking answers. You're wanting to do things. You're wanting to get out. You're wanting to expand your horizons and get out of your comfort zone a little bit um, and explore your surroundings a little bit more. And then we have guilt, like I was, like I've already kind of talked about. And then we have balance, which like, duh, you're a Libra, right? <laughs> um, so I feel like this month could definitely be kind of this balance between wanting to expand and wanting to get out of your comfort zone versus maybe guilt for doing that. Because maybe like your children or your significant other or whatever, like maybe to have those adventures and to explore you like, you know, there's some kind of guilt there, like for doing that. And so I think this month, you know, could be bringing some of that up where you are having to kind of address this, this dynamic between freedom and being free to explore, being free to initiate, being free to roam versus certain responsibilities or certain obligations um, that could be feeling like restricting in some way. We also have the dragon's lair and the mountain and the dragon's lair is kind of about protection, but it's also like a time, it's signifying a time that where you're going into a risky time period where things could get shaken up a little bit. And we also have the mountain here, which also signifies possibly a challenge of some sort. And so the thing is though about the dragon's lair is that 
it talks about, you know, we would never learn anything if we just stood still out of fear all day. And so I feel like you could be facing some kind of fear this month, or you could be wanting to experience new things. But once again, with the guilt card, you feel like you should be doing other things because you're obligated to or because other people want you to. And so you're maybe holding back on some of these things that you want to do and not become somewhat of a challenge for you. So we also have past relational trauma and patterns. And like I was saying with the family dynamics and the childhood and the past stuff, this could definitely be coming up and signifying how you relate with love and sexuality and your own children if you are a parent um, and how that kind of ties into your own childhood and how you were raised and how these patterns may be repeating that you're going to get to the bottom of over these next few months. Uh, we also have rock bottom, now you rise. And so I really feel like this is kind of talking about those cracks in your foundation that need to be addressed uh, with home, family, etc. And so I feel like, you know, this month you're kind of getting to the bottom of something. And then we have let it all go, let it all fall away, it'll be okay. And so I feel like there's something here this month that eventually you're going to have to let go of and it could be some of this guilt it could be you know it's going to be different for different ones of you it could be a situation or you know something that you wanted to do whatever but it's kind of like you're hitting a point this month libra that may seem challenging for some but at the same time it's going to be like time to let all your fears about it go, I think, is how I'm re really reading this right now. And then we also have, for your tarot, we have temperance, which really, once again, goes into that balancing act that I was talking about, where you're trying to find a balance in between being able to live your life and experience new things and learn new things and, and grow in some ways versus certain obligations, home, family, etc., that you have. And I feel like this month, it's going to be so important to make sure that you are taking care of you, that you are taking care of yourself, that you are um, understanding, uh, you know, different perspectives and sides of a situation and that you are also asserting yourself. You know, you're going to, I feel like this month, you're going to be feeling very assertive, especially after the 13th. You're going to be feeling like, you know, you want to initiate things. You're going to be feeling more assertive than usual. And I think you have to find a balance between being assertive and, you know, allowing yourself to not be assertive if that's what the situation may take, right? Like when to step up and say something and when to just kind of let it go because it's too much. And I also feel here, Libra, that there could be something going on in terms of belief systems or like the way that you're viewing something like your perspective because we also have judgment here and so i feel like you're trying to kind of be agreeable possibly or you're kind of trying to moderate situations but at the same time are you really getting what you want out of it? And I think this is a month where you're asking yourself that and you're realizing that, like, are you really getting what you want? When do you have time to worry about you? Or are you moderating situations just so you can worry about you or so you do have you time? And how is that affecting you? You know what I mean? Why are you feeling guilty for doing you, you know? And then we also have judgment here. And I think that this really is kind of like a, reconciliation of past issues that need to be addressed it's like opening the door to old skeletons that need to be addressed and certain things that may need to be forgiven as well especially within the home and the family or even just with your own past and how you grew up and how that affected the way that you see pleasure love fun children um, you know, etc., sex, etc. So, anyways, that is what I'm seeing for you guys this month, Libra. Definitely let me know down below if this reading resonated with you at all. I'd really love to hear your feedback. And uh, if you see any of these themes happening this month, I, I'd really like to hear about it. Uh, I'm a Libra son, so, um, <laughs> so, anyways, but I will see you guys in my other videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.
What's up, Scorpio? Welcome to your December 2021 tarot and astrology reading where I blend tarot and astrology to give you what your uh, forecast of what your month ahead could look like. So let's go ahead and get into your reading. So Scorpio, you've been learning a lot of lessons in 2021 and even, you know, most of 2020 about money, creation, priorities, finances, what you want to bring into this world and what you need to have the kind of life and lifestyle that you want to have, what you need to be successful and what it means to you uh, when you think of value. Like what does value mean to you and what do you give value to? What are your priorities? What's important to you? What do you accumulate in regards to resources and money? And what does that mean for your own self-worth and what attachments do you have to that? And so this is a month that's really wrapping up those lessons. And you're also getting ready to go through some major changes in January where the South Node will enter your sign and the North Node will enter your opposite sign of Taurus. And that is going to be an 18 month period starting in January where you are going to start learning some really big lessons about yourself and who you are and what you want and also relationships, relationship dynamics, and how you show up in the world. And so I think this month starts that in, in a lot of different ways because a few of the transits that we have this month, I think are really hinting towards for you this massive change that's happening in regards to what you desire and what you want in relationships what it is that interests you or what it is that attracts you, your behaviors in, a, in relationships, how you express yourself in relationships is all coming up, I think, during this time. And we have like a lot of freedom energy here. We have freedom, time to find yourself. And so I think this is a month that really starts you in figuring out what you want, figuring out what you like, figuring out your own priorities, what's important to you. And I know you've been getting lessons in that somewhat often on the last couple of years, but I think this month is really where it, like the heat turns on and it's like, yeah, okay, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. And I think that you're going to be dealing with that likely probably for the next couple of months with Mars in your second house, your ruling planet. There's going to be a massive focus starting on December 13th for several weeks about finances and priorities and your value and what's important to you and how you think about money and, you know, finances and value and all of that, what you need, you know, your resources. And on top of that, we have this Venus-Pluto conjunction and Venus going retrograde on Pluto in your third house. And, you know, Venus rules your seventh house of relationships. And so I think this is going to be a massive time of really digging deep and figuring out what it is that you want and desire in relationships, how you go about relationships, how you communicate in relationships and what you want to build in regards to relationships. And so... Yeah, I mean, it, or it could just be a time where your focus is being kind of pulled away from relationships and you're more focused on, you know, getting yourself together and getting your own shit together. And so I think December really starts that. I think another thing that could really start getting be uh, that could really start being brought up this month is possible family conditioning uh, and ideas that you've been conditioned to believe in from certain family dynamics or from how you were raised. And I think that this could also, because we have the bone collector here, which really deals with your conditioning. I think this could also uh, be a month that brings up some changes in regards to your home situation, um, where you're really kind of thinking about what it is that you want in regards to your home, family, living situation, your roots, where you want to settle down, or where you may feel kind of like, restricted or like overwhelmed in in regards to family and your home life and that kind of stuff so yeah so this is a really big month for all of that those are the really big themes that I'm seeing here for you this month there's kind of like this massive push to learn about what you are capable of your potential what you can create because we even have creation and faith here and so and we also have the wishing well which basically is the same thing and all of these cards are basically about you know there's something that you desire there's something that 
you really, really desire. There's something that you want. It could be, you know, a certain amount of money, something material. It could just be a relationship, whatever it is, a passion, a hobby, success in something. There's something that you really desire here, but, you know, you're way too attached to the outcome, I think, and you're way too attached to how it's going to turn out or what could go wrong or whatever. And so when you're trying to create this thing or what, whatever it is that you're, that you're desiring, that you're trying to create in your life has to come with a certain amount of faith. And I feel like that's going to be a really big lesson for you because it's coming up in, in different decks here. And so I think that, that that's going to be really important for you this month. You know, are you even, are you way too attached to the outcome that you're not even enjoying it? You're not even, you know, into it. And you're always looking for like the worst possible case scenario and you're waiting for it to all fall apart and you're way too attached to how it's going to turn out that it doesn't end up turning out how you want to and then you just end up frustrated right and so i think that that if you are freaking out over not getting something that you want at any time this month or freaking out over a desire that you have and it not going the way that you want or being scared it's not going to go the way that you want i think that once again that lesson of kind of having faith and like trusting just trusting in it and just continuing to do you is going to be really big here Okay, and then we also have the Two of Pentacles. So I feel like, once again, there's some kind of like, there's something that you're trying to bring into being. There's something that you're trying to create. And for some of you, this could also be there's two different things that you're kind of playing with, that you're kind of juggling, where there's some kind of change in material and in your material world, like with money, or you're trying to bring in some new income or some other stream of revenue in some way. And you're trying to kind of add on here is kind of what I feel like. And I feel like you're going to be successful as long as you are not worried about the outcome, right? With the five of swords here, as long as you're not worried about, oh, is this going to work out? Am I not going to be successful? Am I going to be defeated? You know, am I going to fail? I think that you can hit like a major milestone this month and like start seeing some kind of result if you're able to, once again, have some kind of faith. So that seems to just be a reoccurring message. Sorry, I keep repeating myself, but we also have this situation is important for your growth. So whatever it is that you're going through this month, Scorpio, is going to be really, really important for your growth. It is teaching you something, you know, and then we also have bring it back to you. So I think that if you're having issues this month, especially in regards to a relationship or especially in regards to somebody else, and you are way too focused on them or you know, the external world and how that is screwing you over, it's going to be really important to bring it back to you. Like, no, what are you doing? Because there's only so much you can control in your external environment. And so if you don't work on the shit inside of you that keeps causing you to get in these situations, then you're, it's just going to keep happening, right? You're just going to keep repeating it. And so it's going to be really, really important this month that you see things that are happening as a mirror reflecting something back inside of you. And so you're going to be very focused on money and, you know, bringing in new things that you desire and supporting yourself and new ways to support yourself in your lifestyle. But at the same time, it's going to be important to understand that you can't always be attached to the outcome or live in the outcome, live in the future, because it kind of becomes self-sabotaging, right? Like you kind of end up self-sabotaging yourself. It becomes self-destructive because you're so worried about the future that you're not really paying all the way, like you're not really paying attention all the way to right now and to getting it done, what you need to get done, right? So... So yeah, um, that is basically what I'm seeing here, Scorpio, for December for you with this Venus retrograde in your third. Want to be very careful. There could be some expenses that come up in some way regarding like transportation for some, maybe not all. Uh, this could also bring up some deep-rooted stuff involving family, siblings, your local environment, community, certain skills that you have, things like this. The third house is kind of weird, but it is one of the better houses to have this transit in. And it can also bring up some relationship stuff since Venus rules your seventh and your 12th. So it could be like some 
self-sabotaging relationship stuff or behaviors in relationship that needs uh, that needs to be addressed, like self-sabotaging behaviors, patterns in relationships that need to be addressed uh, that are shady or behind the scenes in some way. So those are some other things that could come up that's not going to be, it's not like a blanket statement for everybody. It's going to be different for different ones of you. Um, but yeah, that is basically what I am seeing here, Scorpio. Definitely let me know down below if any of this ends up resonating. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And that basically is the end of this video. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my next videos.